also be streaming. If you want to, yeah. Just make sure you don't like dox yourself if you catch this application. Hi, Shmini Weenie. You only here for Ginger? Well, maybe you should go to twitch.tv slash snap. Except I'm not streaming. Understandable. I suppose you can be there in spirit and I can interact with you on the, on the chat through my OBS. Oh, hi. He's not like he's alive. Don't worry about it. Um, I, I'm a step one. I, I haven't slept in a while. That's understandable. I just realized how much more tricky this is going to be now that I'm looking at the full like D and D race list. I was going to say I needed to pull up the the race list. I went to go counting legacy races. Of course we are. Mama didn't raise no little bitch. Mama didn't raise no bitch. You do realize that makes a lot of... Oh. Okay. Oh. Basic races. You got your dragonborn. Dragonborn, dwarf, elf, gnome, half, half elf, half orc, halfling, human, and tiefling. And I don't know why just regular orcs aren't a part of this list. Yeah, that's racist, probably. Games Watch. Wait, what is it? D and D Beyond. Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Games Workshop. Cool. Close enough. Okay. There's some basic ones. And by basic, I mean complex enough to probably give us a headache later down the line. I don't think we need to do like the common ones first. I think we just need to get them all out here, and then we just go down the line. Mor Mor Morden Kane presents Monsters of the Multiverse. You got your... Aracocra? What class are you playing? No, 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 Wendigo. We're, we're making a universe today, baby. Yeah, we're doing some world building. A world building, baby. Uh, they're the bird persons. The ASMR, which are... What does it carry the spark of the upper plates in their souls? So they're just like humans, but a bit more magical, I guess. Um. Edge inside, they're elementals. They're angels. They're angels. But they got wings and everything? Yes. Whack. You got bugbear. They're cool. Bugbears? Those are a goblin subrace. The centaur. Which, uh... Wait, bugbears are a goblin sub-race? Yes. They look nothing alike! I know they don't. They're from the Feywild, I believe. That sounds dumb. What? Bugbears are hulking cousins of goblins and hobgoblins, with roots in the Feywild. Huh. Uh, any room for an elder wendigo that guards the elven forest? Maybe? Yeah. We we'll gotta start at the evolution phase well, first. Changelings are cool. They like, um, their shapeshifters basically, right? Yeah, they're the mimic tears from Elden Ring. Deep gnome. Cool. The fuck is a Durgar? Dwarves whose ancestors were transformed by centuries living in the deepest parts of the Underdark. So they're like deep, deep dwarves. They're dark. It's, they're the dwarf equivalent of dark elves. Uh huh. In the beginning, hi Zazzy. Where's Oh yeah. Genocide. Should we? There we go. Where are naked cat boys? Not on fucking Twitch.tv. If you don't want to get banned, flips out dagger. Also, that's either Leonin or Tabaxi, just depending on what sort of cat you're looking for. Who types? Uh, Eldar... El... Eladrin? Uh, Elves of the Feywild. So they're, like, super fucked up by magic, I guess. Fucked up by magic. They're fucked up by fairy magic elves. They got generic fairy. 
Uh, you know what I'm going to do? What? How do I do this again? How do I get onto the other column? Uh, I'll be fine. I feel like, oh, you mean uh, moving it to the middle? No, no, I figured it out. Don't worry about it. If you want to move it to the middle, though, you'll find I think something fun's about to happen. Watch this. You ready? Boom. Boom. Furbogs are distant cousins of giants. First Furbogs wandered the primeval forest of the multiverse. The magic of those forests entwined themselves with the Furbog souls. Are they, like, small? Fearbog? Yeah. Um, their uh, size type is medium. Put me right onto, like, a fucking, like, bi link. The Bexy all day, baby. <laughs> You got the fire, Janassi. Then we got my favorite race, baby. We got my favorite race. We got my favorite. It's the GIF Yonki. The GIF Yonki. They're fucking the psychic little... Chad elves that just like this... come from another reality and like. <laughs> it's also GIF Renzai. Don't, worry, don't forget about those. Yeah, the exact same race, but one of them are militaristic assholes. That's like canon. Why did it not? You see how it put a red line under Gifts Arai, but not Gif Yankee? What the fuck? We have Goliath? Wait, hang on. Are we on the same uh, site for the, the race list? I'm on D&D Beyond right now. I'm gonna leave D&D Beyond soon enough and find like a more comprehensive, useful source. William? I had to you type Z, I forgot that that happens. Probably set up the key for that. <laughs> Can you switch your key to literally anything else? Like the you... minus the minus sign on your numpad. There's no If I do that, my you... stream will start recording. Uh fucking the tilde key. Ooh. And where's my push to mute button? It'd be in key binds. Toggle mute, edit key bind. Tilde. Bitch, Tilda. There we go. Is that, does that work? Hey, how this guy's constantly muting himself? It won't work. Yeah, it's gonna work, baby. Woo woo! <laughs> yeah, just don't type console commands in any games from now on. Matilda was an okay movie. Which one was Matilda again? Probably had some bitch named Matilda. <laughs> Fuck you! She probably wasn't a bitch, as you say. Okay. Yeah, I'm on D&D Beyond. Uh, I understand that it's all surface level. I'm just trying to, like, copy-paste names right now. I'm on the wiki uh, dot. Yeah, I'll, 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 we can browse wikis and see if there's any that we, like, haven't seen. Uh, goblins. Classic. Surprised that they only came... You know, I was about to say I'm surprised that they only came in, like, the extended, like, Monster of the Multiverse manual, but, like... So the fucking fairies. You know, I think orcs are on here too. Sorry, in the monstrous section, yes. Goliaths, they're cool. They must be tall as fuck. Yeah, they're basically half giants. The one in the orphanage? Oh, you mean Tracy Beaker? The first Goliaths lived on the highest mountain peaks far above the tree line. Heron Gun. They are rabbit Goli people. Their name is Heron Gun?! Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? That's stupid! I hate that! <laughs> Nobody plays these people, by the way. What the fuck is a hobgoblin? Because I always thought that they were just, like, slightly more unhinged versions of goblins. But now that I'm looking they at this picture, are. they seem, like, more normal than I was thinking. They first appeared with their goblin... Boy. Oh, they're in the Feywild as well. The ancient courts of the Feywild. I this hate, why actually it, hate is a strong word. I despise the end. Who's the end? <laughs> this is yeah. why nobody plays these races, is because nobody cares about the Feywild. Like, how do you make the Feywild a place that's not obnoxious? You don't. You, you have to embrace the obnoxious. You make it the moon. 
do you make the Feywild the moon? You make it a celestial body that orbits the planet that you're on. It's another dimension, though. Yeah, you can go through a portal and you just wind up on the Feywild, which is that place up there also. It's just that people is... don't usually fly to it. That's that's what people do, though. That's what most D&D campaigns do. Like, if you run into, like, the Tarask or something, or some, some creature that you can't kill, you just, like, put a portal underneath it, banish it to the Feywild, and then just never go to the Feywild. It's their yeah. problem now. Here's the thing, right? That Tarask can't fly back through space either. I think we're onto something. Oh no. Are we on something? I just don't want the Feywild to be like an annoying stretch of plain forest that goes on forever and is infinitely like Fey and stuff, you know? It's a backrooms level. It is a backrooms level, but like... I don't know. Maybe the Feywild comes into existence alongside magic. In this world, Feywild could be the moon if you wanted it to be. Oh, it could be a blue moon then. What the moon had color? The blue moon. Uh, I played as a DM at one point, and I had a Kenku in my party. I'm oh, not sure if this is like canon to Kenkus, but I think they can only say things that they've heard. Yes. I love that. They. Yeah, they can accurately mimic sounds they've heard, including voices. Uh, plot twist, the Feywild is where the BBEG is. You could put a BBEG in the Feywild and I'd still never go there. Yeah. That's probably the worst location you can put your BBEG. Also, hi Assassin. Hi, hi Moogie. Welcome in. Kobold? Kobolds are everyone's favorites. I kind of like them as, like, the They're little fucking... favorites or least favorites. I like them, but in terms of, like... I, I like these little fucking dudes that like look up to dragons like, oh, dragons. You are our forefathers. And then the dragons are like, I just ate like an entire village of you people. <laughs> One way or another, you're going to the Feywild. <laughs> the moon is falling down. <laughs> oh God, it's like a Majora's Mask. The BBEG just brings the moon to the earth. You want to play a kobold next time you're PC? Hog, I was thinking of setting up, like, a second campaign. I want to get settled into this one and get my groove back as a DM. Me and Ginger played uh, yesterday with uh, Schmel from chat. I'd say it went well. I think it uh, went well. Lizard Folk. Feels a bit redundant when you're on the same list as Dragonborn and also Tortles. And you want T. Yeah. Minotaurs. Distant cousins of Dragonborn and Kobolds. Yeah. You're playing Bugbear Druid of the Moon, who's a full healer. His name is Doss the Main Man, who loves to flex it, at just random times. You know, there are Moon Priests now after Spell uh, Jammer came out. They're, oh. they're also completely busted. My my stepbrother wants to play as one just so that he can be a god at level 3. So you couldn't join I... you so excited you left your character? It's okay! We'll have plenty of time in the future. Join someone streaming now playing Scream Mel version of Baby Shark and you've never been so cringed out you bounced instantly. <laughs> it sounds like a good time to me, baby. Uh, finally, we have Orc. Ranger. We yeah, finally forget. arrived at Orc. I forget his combination, but it was it was in such a way that he, when he reached level three, he would have like twenty five spell slots. Oh, and that's ridiculous. Uh, the first character I ever played is a PC. Sa Sa Sator. The first character I ever played as for a PC was a human rogue, because I was vanilla ice cream back then. I'm glad you guys aren't doing future D&D. It seems so boring from what my friend told me. Most people play as androids or cyborgs. 
future yeah, D&D. You gotta... Future D and D. You gotta just. That one requires a lot of planning in order to do right. Pretty much any sort of futuristic D and D campaign uh, requires you doing a lot of planning in order to do it right, which is kind of what we're doing right now. <laughs> we're literally doing need to. See, because the thing about D&D is, like, look at all of these races and tell me that... Because, uh, do you remember the movie Bright? Yes. I love Bright. That was a great movie. I watched that in a hotel a while back, because it just had Netflix and it was on. See, I liked Bright. I really did. I understand the complaints about it, though. I don't think you can just take fancy races and dump them in our setting. I don't think yeah. all of these, like, magical beings just mesh with our reality. They make they their don't. own one. Like, and, these guys have I, their own history. They probably have, like, horrendous racism towards each uh, other. Yeah, especially with orcs. Yeah. Bright Suck, that was... It's a 50-50 movie, I'll tell you. You either loved it or you hate it. Yeah, I so I like the concept of it. I know that it has flaws, and I'm fine with those flaws. So what me and Ginger are doing today is we're taking like the concept of what if we took all of D and D and we tried to work them towards our sort of modern reality? What would that look like? How would that manifest? Because like you have all of this to deal with, you have to deal with the fact that the Feywild is eventually going to fucking crop up somewhere. There's that's also. The Feywild's not the only dimension in D and D. Yes. <laughs> uh, you got your sea elf, which is um Atlantis. Small brain ignored the issues and just liked the plot. Yeah, that... I could zone out, drink some fucking booze, lay back, look at Grinder, and just chill to that movie. To be honest. As long as you end up with a tabaxi, I'm good. Hey, yo. What if you end up as a tabaxi? Full name is Das the Main Man Moss Flexington the 23rd. There were 22 of us. There were 22 others. You still use that? You said you deleted it? No. Look, I'm just trying to find someone to indulge in my... You know how sometimes you have to stop yourself because you're on a public broadcast on a website that doesn't allow you to say certain things? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've never and, heard and of the Shadar Kai. You, op- <laughs> you know how I just openly ignore that and just say shit that'll definitely get me cancelled? <laughs> Don't say shit that'll get you cancelled. You're never using that app again, valid. Shadar I haven't encountered Kai. any like weird doxing like that. Uh, once you die, Kai with Faye, rest of the Elven King. Oh, now so they they're, exist in they're, state between life and death. They're the they're they're fucking uh, the Inari from from Warhammer Forty Thousand. They're they're death elves. So they're elves that live in under. What's the Shadowfell? Is that a place or a thing? The Shadow. It's probably like the dark elf equivalent of the Feywild elves. Okay, so it's like they're, a section of the Feywild. It's like the yeah, dark side of the moon. Oh, it's like the unseely cord. Yeah. You're gonna try the app. Be careful, assassin. If you're gonna try grinder, be very careful. Damn Check man, people beforehand. Self defense implement. Yeah. Always be strapped if you're allowed to be. Uh, shifter. Main arteries are on the. Neck, oh the no way! They shape shift into beasts. Yes, they're pretty cool. It's Animorphs. Yeah, it's Animorphs. Oh, shit. Okay, we can I show you something really cursed that you probably already know of? Okay, you can show me, you can show me. We'll go to the bank, because they're Jazzy's favorite, because they're cats. And then we've got... <laughs> Do you know what we have next, Ginger? Give me a second, I gotta show, I gotta show you this now. You Do reminded you know- me of Animorphs, so...
<laughs> I did see these. The fucking horrible, aren't they? The Animorphs with the starfish girl. If you look at other apps, carries over, you'll have nothing to worry about. Here's the thing. Um, if you've ever used Tinder, because I, I, I would love to continue going off on fucking Tinder for all eternity. It's a piece of shit app. Uh, the way that its algorithm works is that if you're tapped on more, it will show your profile to more people. So if you're unpopular, you will be buried by the algorithm. You really like playing as a tabaxi because of natural claw weapons? Hey Jazzy, did you play as the Khajiit? There's also, Hi, yeah, did you play as the Khajiit? <laughs> Alright, Ginger, are you ready for this? We got a turtle next. Hey guys. It's Tortilla Shelby. It's me, Tortilla Tortellini. <laughs> no, that's not my name. Yeah, the idea is you get a couple of swipes in like the first couple days and then like you get buried by the algorithm because you're not sexy. Tinder and Bumble have both done this to you. They're scum apps. They want to like monetize dating. It's shitty. Like if you are going to find someone, it'll be natural. I promise you. You will naturally find someone, like, maybe with a hobby or something. But don't worry, you'll get someone. Maybe they're obsessed with building tiny spacemen. Maybe, maybe they named Ginger Snap. Maybe they're, maybe, maybe they, maybe they had like, a uh, Half-Life and also the back rooms and decided to create an internet personality based off those two things. Uh, Triton. So that definitely... Atlanteans. The fish people. Yeah. Then, uh, right next to them... What did Genesi? They fought. Oh! Oh my god, on the website, this next one's got their tongue out. <laughs> Yen Ti. Uh, the yeah, the Yen Ti. This is every DM's least favorite race because they are fucking impossible to kill. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Uh, we're now on to they are they are they are magic resistant, so all magic they gain advantage in saving throws against, and they have poison resilience, which means they are fucking immune to being poisoned. You never played the cat guys in Elder Scrolls, just in D and D. Understandable. I always played as a Nord because uh, you know me, Ginger. I'm massively late. Hateful. I'm a hateful, horrible person. Uh, I played as whatever the lizard folk were called in that game. They're called fucking Argonians, and they breathe Argonians. underwater, baby. Yeah, I, I, I chose it specifically because they breathe in the water. Because I didn't. There's no holding breath gauge in Skyrim. I don't know why. Can you find out more about the Kender for me? Because I'm really annoyed by the definition that I'm seeing here. The Kender. Yeah, Kenda have a supernatural curiosity that drives them to adventure. That's not telling me anything about the race, it's just telling me about, like, That's a someone's personality. Kenda. They inhabit the world of Kryun. They look like a sub-race of a uh, halfling. Huh. Next up, we got all of the uh, oh, sci-fi shit. shit. Okay, never mind. What the hell? So, I guess nobody can decide what Kender look like. Some people think they look almost exactly like just regular halflings, but then there's other people who are like, they have tails and like animal-like ears. And then See, there's I'm some looking... people who... I'm looking right on D&D Beyond, and I'm seeing what I think is, like, a halfling with elf ears. Yeah, this seems to be, like, the, the most rug standard kender. If I'm going to send it to you on uh, Discord. Are people from Birmingham in the list? No, Birmingham won't exist in this world. Yeah, people, I guess, don't really know what these characters are. Also, but, uh, I love how, like, the number one search result on this is why Kender are the most annoying race in D&D. But why are they the most annoying race in D&D? Do you have, like, their resource sheet up? Uh, I, I, have, I have it on the wiki dot. Uh, let, me, let me go to D&D wiki. Uh, 
History Society names traits. Uh, charisma score increased by one. That's not much. About 100 years. Mostly known as chaotic. Three foot tall, weigh about 40 pounds. Base walking speed of 30 feet. Dark vision. Haunting nature. Skilled at exploiting the oh, psychological they, weakness they, of others. You know the vicious mockery cantrip. Charisma is also your spell casting for this spell. You just happen to acquire things which are not yours. You're proficient at the sleight of hand skill. You just steal everything. They, they steal they're, everything. They're, so the reason why they are the most annoying character race is because anybody who's a dickhead will play as them and just steal off of their party members. Languages. You can read and write in common and either gnomish, dwarvish, or halfling. So I guess that implies that their origin is somewhere around gnomish, dwarvish, or halfling. We can have Kryun in this game. We can make it a, like a, a kingdom. Sounds perfect for sheeper. No, not a fucking party like pooper or like that. When you go into DM session, you're going to add ch chances of random chimp event in every new area. Chimps appear and attack. If a 17 is played, the chimps appear and attack. I've seen a lot of 17s, that's dangerous. Yeah, I kind of skipped past all of the adventures in space stuff, because I'm really not sure how we're going to implement this one yet. Yeah, it's, it's, we can just ignore Spelljammer stuff. Like, they could just be alien invaders in the modern era if we want. Like, just... if, you, if you really want to, you can add auto gnomes, because that's basic. they're basically just dwarf warforged. They are just... Auto Speaking of, we haven't seen warforged. Where are they? We made a legacy now. Yeah, all of these races, they come from space. You got the astral elves, they're about what you'd expect. The auto gnomes are. Yeah, they're robots. Uh, the gif, they're the coolest looking ones. They're fucking space rhinos. Yeah, space rhinos. They they used to live on the material plane and then they learned space travel. You got the Hadozi, they look like tech people. And there's the plasmoids, they're cool. They're the Elden Beast as people. Yes, they're the Elden Beast as people. Um, there's also Mantis people, I forget what they're called. The Freikreen. Freikreen, okay. Yeah, the Grinder's, like, distance thing is pretty, like, spooky. Luckily, it doesn't update live, I think. Did you, did you add Warforged? But we haven't got to them yet. We're on Owlin. They are exactly what you'd expect. Wait, I love how you said we're, we're... I don't know how to add the space races, and then you just added them all anyways. Yeah, like, we'll, we'll find a place to put them eventually. I think if we're going to eventually write these races in, because, again, people are going to want to play them. Like, we'll find a place to put them. Uh, make sure to do mistle... Le Milestone leveling, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, milestone is best. Yeah, combat experience is not good. It's a lame system. Because this, all that that tells you from a story perspective is, in order to become the greatest wizard in the land, you don't have to like read books and practice your craft for thousands of years in order to become the strongest wizard who ever lived. You just need to go kill goblins for three hours. Okay. Mystic Odyssey of Theros. This is the one that I remember paying for just so I could use the Sator on the D&D Beyond app. You, you my... definitely could have found that for free on a yeah. third party site. It was three pounds and I got to do it automatically. But we got the Leonin too, which are lion people. Yeah. Did you um, want to play a Tabaxi but you're not a fanboy? Lineages, question mark? Now. Can you find out if lineages is a thing? Because it says that they're a thing on Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, but, you know. Once while exploring an abandoned house, we went upstairs, you rolled a 1, and ended up looking to the void and going insane. Your old DM was so extreme with shit. It was so annoying every campaign. It lost at least five characters. See, that's, like, annoying for me, because I don't kill a player's character unless they want him to die.
Uh, so does... it looks like um, lineages are basically like mutts. Huh. Dog? No, not like dog, as in like you basically like every every race under the sun banged each other and you eventually became the product of that. Oh. So that's why so they don't have is... a picture. Yeah. You basically just like choose lineages that you come from and like you can you I guess mishmash them together. Oh my god, this sounds like a, a, a fucking just suicide attempt for your DM trying to figure out what your skills would be. That's horrible. Uh, there's actually a manual based on that concept where the world nobles are high leveled because they can just... Oh yeah, power level. The LDN did not scale correctly. Like, yeah, that's just... I just want to, like, when I do campaigns, I just want to, like, provide, like, a whimsy, whimsical adventure, you know? Complete player freedom. And uh, what they don't realize, also immortality. I thought about, like, the legacy stuff, right? Depending on how different it is, we could put, like, a plus one for, like, a subset culture. Right. Like, a slightly different breed. Like, like how we had um, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. And a whole bunch of others. I forget the the names for, like, the other two or three. An ice dragon appeared at the beginning to just show what we were going to kill. And a dragon attack at his and the whole party were wiped out. After we spent hours on each person. <laughs> and bruv, this DM does not sound qualified to DM. I uh, tiny to the name because he thought it made it seem bigger than the second. Completely understandable. Uh, we're now on Changeling Legacy, so I guess that's a different subset of Changelings. Maybe they do it differently. We've got another one. Uh, Cal Ash Ah. Uh. Compound people created from the union of humanity with renegade spirits from the plane of dreams. So they're like dream spirit people? Uh, I need to just go to D&D Beyond. I, I, you are... Also, I found the Warforged. There they are. Uh, I'm going to put a plus one next to Shifter too because there's another one. So I guess that's people who shift differently. Do you shift standing up, or do you shift sitting down? I used to wipe standing up. You converted? I converted. I got better. <laughs> uh, the DM was nice, but was not good. His girlfriend joined us, and he's changed roles all the time. Ah! I would never have that love for Ace Beanie. If he rolled bad, I would kill him. Verdon, are an interesting looking one. Inquisitions Incorporated, Verdon owe their existence to chaos, doing the best to find their way in an unfamiliar world. They look like tall goblins. We have Centaur Legacy, subset of Centaurs. Uh, we got a Loxodon, oh fuck it's the elephants. Elephant people. Human elephants. Strong, calm, wise. Minotaur. Plus one. Fine, Simic on. hybrid. The Simic combine uses magic to transfer the traits of animals into humans. Huh. So it's people with like animal souls. They're draugers. They do look like it, don't they? Remember you got an etch tranny for stealing the wallet? Because it would advance the story too quickly. We need to make money. He said, you grab the wallet, and are sent to jail for a day. <laughs> Bruv didn't even play out the scene. He just said, you grab it, and you're sent to jail. A homie could not improvise. How does stealing a wallet advance the story too quickly? 
They needed money. That sounds like he's trying to railroad you into a situation where you can make money, and he didn't want to, like... Ooh, really hype on here. What? Feral Tiefling. Feral Tiefling. Yeah, and I like Tieflings, but way more demonic. Yeah, there's also Legacy Tortles. Oh, yeah. What kind of character you're playing game. in Eldritch Knight Oni? Eldritch Knight? There are Onis? Um, portal, portal, portal. You needed to make one gold for a travel ticket, and you gold. saw a rich bitch. So, yes, they 100% were trying to railroad you into a situation where you could get money. But they didn't present it, like, well enough. They didn't enough. present it like that. Uh, we have an incredible one. What, the Lokatha? The Lokatha. Be resilient and proud that fish folk have endured war slavery and mistreatment at the hands of other aquatic creatures. They would probably have some really bad times with the Tritons. These are one of the worst races to play in the game because they need water to breathe. Oh my god. If Tabaxi Thief mind went for her instantly, you should not have been punished for that. Oh my god, the fucking grung? Grung. Frog people. <laughs> okay. Oh, they have a legacy for the gift? Yes. Oh wait, this isn't the gift of anything like that, it's just the gift. Yes, this, this is what you, you guys were before the breakup. I, I guess these guys would probably like extinct themselves after a while. Yeah, they're, they're, they're done. SMR have a legacy to them, so I'll put a plus one. Same with Bugbear, Fear Vogue, Goblin, Hobgoblin. Oi. Kenku, Kobold, Lizardfolk, Orc, Tabaxi, Triton, Yuan T. It's okay, that's not Yuan M. Those are Yuan T purebloods, though. Okay. It's better to be that many plus ones, actually. Hobgoblin. We do for a Thank you. Cobalt. Wizard Fault. Orc. I guess if we don't do like subsets or like alt cultures, we can always come back to these as like. What, like, uh, just inspiration for the past. Unless they're just written the exact same in the rules of what's different. Uh, UNT Pure Blood. For most of them, it is, like. But then there's others, like the UNT Pure Blood, who were different. Uh, they are different. And also, the Genocide are also different for these ones. Like, the Legacy ones have the powers of all the elements, they're not one specific one. Maybe they were people before they got split. Oh, Goliath. We never saw them, did we? I think we did. Control there. Oh, yeah, there they are. Okay, that's every race on the official website. Once he made you laugh, you were a snake man. You forgot the race. And the ice dragon appeared and fired an ice breath at you. Your tiny pet snake gizmo shielded everyone from the blast. And fucking died. Oh. Request get them parche. Okay. So now let's go on to an, an unofficial website that's probably got like actual help on it. Uh, I don't know. You don't know? I, I was on the wiki dot and it didn't have nearly as much shit on it than. Should we just say we've got them all then? I think we got them all. I think we got them. Case closed, we're done here today. Alright, see you all tomorrow. Bye. Um, Alright, well, let's go to another page. Ooh! Asimar have, like, four subsets. Protector, Scourge, Fallen. I guess that just depends on the angels and stuff. Yeah, we're gonna the have to... Bears are... What the fuck is a Bullywug? A what? It's a frog. It's a frog, man. It's called a Bullywug. Where? Uh, I found another website. Centaur, Centaur, Changeling, Custom Lineage, there we go. 
need to get started on the actual meat and potatoes of this. We, we've been planning for about an hour, just listing races. I found another one, though. Oh my god, there are actual half vampires built into the game. Vampires are built into the game, yes. Dampmere. Damp Dampmere? I don't want to miss any. Now, let me just, um, play what I can do. I think I can increase the margin of this page. That'll be just... Ah, that'll be fine. We did all the Dragonborns. That the Dragonborns types don't really matter, I don't think. I think that's just, like, saying, like, different races of Dragonborn. Like, they're hardy folk. They probably survived, like, multiple climates. Dwarf, dwarf, elf, 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 elf. Fairy folk, bog, gentai. Oh my fucking god. We have to plan for the gnolls. We, we need to find a, a baseline, which I think we made it a lot of progress with dwarves. And then we just branch out from that. Like, what what's going on with these other people? Uh, we've got to ask the question, then. What is the first race that, like, comes into the world? I think we we answered dwarves. I think the dwarves because are, like, an ancient race. They they don't... I, I'd say they, they might worship a god, but he, the, way, the way that you explained them was they... They, they pursue rational thought and... Uh, Innovative. Uh, we'll feel like prehistory. Underline. Dwarves. Me and Ginger were talking about this a lot. Uh, another funny story my first character was called Asmodeus, and a world mentor appeared, and we couldn't beat it, so I tried to seduce it. You got a net 20 twice, and the DM refused to let you seduce it. They said the Manticore becomes terrified of Asmodeus and shakes in fear. And then the warrior killed it. Motherfucker rolled a nat 20 twice to fuck the monster. And the DM said no. Yeah, at that point, just straight up say no. You can't seduce this creature. So we said we would do like a custom map, right? Yes. I don't know if we want to make that map now, or if you want me to make it later. Let's call this shit Pangea, right? The OG life cradle. Uh, I reckon, like, life was coming along. Life was doing normal. And there's a big sort of sharing event that, like, forces these, like, creatures that would later evolve into dwarfs underground. Or maybe they're already, like, Maybe they're already, like, humanoid, but then they're forced underground, where they evolve into dwarves. You don't let you seduce anyone or anything, but fuck him. Hi, Shmiri. Uh. Oh, by the way, I finished stuffing the giant fucking purple teddy bear. Thank you for the seven months, Shimirioni. Uh, a lot of content. Next. Harbored most evolving life. This early time, things then would eventually form the dwarves. We're turning into sapiens. Therefore, a great tragedy uh, caused them to have to flee the law 
the surface. From here, the dwarves, instead of turning to prank against Then instinct realized they would have to pursue rational hope in order to. Uh, also, you love Zazzy? I love Zazzy too! Survive the environment. That makes sense to me. Like, being closer to the center of gravity in the world would weigh you down a bit. And also, more than likely, you would want to invest the least amount of time possible in building, like, tunnels and stuff for you to, like, move around in, so you'd probably be short, mm -hmm. which would, uh, through evolution would make you be a much more, like, lower, broad, stouter, frame. That's how you get the dwarves. This is basically just how squads became a Also, hi, Kurikage. I, I'm sorry nice to flip. drawing parallels in 40k, but, you know. Uh, D&D stuff? Sweet. Yeah, we're trying to, like, write up right now what we think an alternate history would look like. Not an alternate history. How a world of D&D might progress from, like, the stages of early evolution to like, the modern era. Yes. Especially things in Xenobio stuff, gravity will make you shorter and stuck you. Yeah. That makes sense why dwarves are always underground and elves climb trees. What elves, at least? Ah. Uh, I get the feeling that, like, pursuing this fort would make them one of the earliest, like, advanced civilizations. And it's the dwarves are eventually going to have to have a collapse. Because when you think of the stereotype of the dwarf, you think of, like, the short little angry kind of stupid, like, barbarian types. This is how I did it in my setup for my world, is, um, the first people to, like, form their, like, super empire were the dwarves, and the next people were the high elves. Um, and then they both suffered a collapse, and that's why there's these different branch-offs of elves and, uh, dwarves everywhere. Well, actually, well, mainly just for elves. For dwarves, uh, they all are either in this one specific kingdom, um, and if you're not a part of that kingdom, you're known as the Lost. I can go through a hedonistic period where shit declines. Yeah, so the way I'm thinking, like, this stuff happens is dwarves are, like, they're a guild, sort of, like, assigned role society, I reckon. Yes. Like, you have to pick the berries, you have to dig the tunnels. And, like, this is, like, ingrained in them because, like, if they strayed from that, historically, they would have died. You were born... Because the underground is not easy. You were born to be a digger. You were born to be a brewer. Eventually, you would have, like, the administrators becoming, like, the central, like, authority and power. They'd be the ones that were allowed to be, like, smart and educated. I imagine that greed would eventually take over. Yes, uh, and I feel like the the first like domino brick that falls over, it, like something that I said, uh, said, something I said um, the other night, was uh, just like like maybe like the village idiot or something who's not good for anything, um, accidentally dumps like a, a barrel full of mushrooms into like a vat of water, and he doesn't want to get in trouble, so he just seals it up and like maybe buries it somewhere and like they find it like a year later once they figure out that they have a shortage of mushrooms and when they crack the uh the vat open he's he's invented beer I that makes sense to me generally both got things so efficient that they started being more leisurely leaving the work to certain class of people uh maybe his workers die in a huge cabin collapse or something and all the hedonistic fools have to relearn it Maybe, yeah, like, maybe it's natural disaster. Maybe it's, like, management. Whatever happens, like, the Dwarven civilization collapses. Maybe part of the separation is what branches out into one of the other races. 
yeah. And this is this can also explain the different clans because there's also there's like mountain dwarves and then there's the 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 dark dwarves who probably went even deeper. Warring and mining below the ground. Before most races had figured out fire. Great dwarven holds rose and fall. Now, through battle. Hmm. Not just yet. The old world dwarves and goblins shared common ancestors. That's really neat. Yeah. Like, that makes sense to me, too. I like... So, I have something similar to that. Was, um... Orcs basically became goblins through the same sort of evolutionary, um... Similarities that happened that made dwarves. Yeah. So, like, orcs found themselves in tight, confined spaces, and they're like, it's it's not, it's no longer advantageous to be giant and strong. You need to be small and agile. So, the thing that then really makes sense to me is, um, goblins are seen as more wiry, right? Yes. Whereas dwarves are more stocky. And that makes sense to me because orcs would have had to be, like, hunter-gatherers, like, high adrenaline, high calorie, like, Workers, and the second that they're like forced underground too, they would decay. Yes, rapidly, because there's no, there's no. There's real not enough to eat. eat, unlike the dwarves, they're suffering. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to. I, I, I would probably imagine at least that um, they would find like mushrooms and roots that dwarves would find like a delicacy. They would hate it. They think it tasted disgusting. Yeah, that maybe they're more Be carnivorous. Yeah, being so focused on meat. Are, are we are we just figuring out that dwarves are, like, vegetarian? I think it makes sense that dwarves are, like, more omnivorous, but with, like, a um, penchant to root type stuff. Like, they like their strong, like, root type foods. Yeah. But they will also, like, cattle. Like, both of them couldn't be picky. Yeah, dwarven moss and mushroom farms. Is it a caste system that we're thinking of here, where you're, like, assigned to a job? Yes. Caste? With an E? Yes. And this was the only way to survive their new harsh home. On this, they survived mostly on moths, mushrooms, roots, and moss. Yeah, and had to endure great hardship trying to survive. This separated the dwarves eventually into their own types of text. Some were born to be farmers, some miners, some would be overseers. Those overseers, over time, would eventually gain themselves things over the dwarves, adding to a power division. Here's a fun one for Jinji. You also had mushroom farmers that grew a, spe uh, a species where the mushroom skin got tanned in place of leather. Oh. Ooh. I'm right. That's chalky, like, feeling. I put, like, uh, bold over, um, 
the races, we can like look back through and find one. Should make the goblins alongside from now. Yeah, I say orcs go for the same thing. The orc. It's orc with a K or a C. I'm gonna do a C. It's a C. Orcs are only with a K in for in uh Warhammer forty thousand because they can't spell. It's funny. Some fled below. Grand. Uh, was great. Maybe it was the Ice Age. Maybe that was really all it took. Yeah. This is what caused like a great flood event or something like that. And while some people build arcs, the other ones were just like, uh, go underground. I don't know. No one really thinks how does clothing work for underground races? The canker of cotton, and animals tend to be too small to tan skins. Yeah, mushroom works. That are they just always wearing mail? Well, even if you're wearing metal, you still need like leather straps in order to keep it all together. Yeah, so the Great Ice Age comes and it forces some to go underground and some stay above ground trying to survive in like the way that we did. And um, eventually when all of the ice melts, it like floods the Dwarven Kingdoms. Oh, so you're saying it, this is the collapse. This is what happened. So some people, so they're underground. Some people have to go above ground. Maybe in like in the mountaintops. That's how you get the mountain dwarves. Mm -hmm. Some people go even deeper. Yeah. That's how you get the Drugar. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Look, Ancestor, it's time. Also split some fled below ground, others break the ice age above ground. Orcs, however, required much higher uh, caloric consumption than their dwarven counterparts. As I such, imagine... they suffered greatly underground and would evolved to become the goblins. I imagine orcs back then probably hunted a lot of megafauna and that's how they were able to get that massive caloric yield. All they would need to do is kill basically like one giant sloth and they'd be good. I think the system would work like dwarves embrace the care system and they know what they need to do to survive. But goblins coming from, like, orcish ancestors, they understand more of, like, a communal, like, lifestyle. Yes. Where instead of, like, embracing this, we need to survive like this, they take more, like, family-oriented decisions, they embrace a bit mob of selfishness. Mentality. Yeah, they have, like, a mob sort of mentality, they have, like, tribes, I feel like, underground. The goblin tribes. Yeah. Instead of making a care system... You, you mentioned that they have, like, uh, uh, a short memory span, which causes them to forge alliances with clans that they were just at war with, like, a week ago. Yeah, I, I always imagined that, like, the shorter of the races, if they were being, like, turbo-hunted, but I don't think... Unless the orcs were on, like, a separate continent, which had its own surface of uh, fauna, which came underground to hunt them. I don't think they'd suffer too much. Until maybe they had to, like, be forced to go back above ground. And at so that going... point, most of the uh, passive megafauna has already been eaten by, like, other intelligent creatures like dragons. Yeah. And that's how like, you get kobolds. 
There are the goblins which had to go above ground, which um, don't get on well with the stone goblins who still persist underground to this day. Rook's ancestor at the time. Uh, they continued their way. They continued their communal ways in a tribal society instead of making laws set in stone. They embraced a more hmm, passive mob mentality where even when people worked for their collective, they would hmm, Still hold true to their families, like clans. Such slash underground rivalry would be similar to the drown in D and D. Then, thinking that surface elves are traitors and despising them. Yeah, makes sense to me. I, We're still in, like, ancient, like, ancient history. Like, this stuff's been going on for, like, tens of thousands of years. Yes. Meh. 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 Goblins. I'll tag Dwarven here, even though I don't think it's necessary to tag it now. Making care system, they continued in their communal ways in a tribal-style society. Instead of making laws set in stone, they embraced a more passive mob mentality, where even when people worked for their collective, they would still hold true to their family slash clans. I'm cheaper. Thank you for the biddy, Cheery. So, where do elves come from? Uh... Let me look up what... God, the High Elves worship. Could you gotta think about gods? I'm thinking the first elves were High Elves, and then just through thousands of years of interaction with other you... peoples, environments, and races, they just sort of broke up into their own distinct communities, like Wood Elves. Uh, the drow or dark elves, um, star elves, moon elves, sun elves, stuff like that. What if the elves originally come from planet Feywild? Where they were, like, so, embracing the gods and, like... Oh, they... they you're, you're actually, uh... You're actually right. I am? Also, can yeah, we like, kiss? In, in, in their canon, they're they're <laughs> they originate in the Feywild. See, I was thinking like, if elves all come from here, what if they like also had one of those huge ancient societies where they just like worship the gods, but then they like broke the accord, and that like shattered them. Yes, and then they broke up into distinct peoples. Instead of prehistory, this would be ancient history instead, right? Uh, which sort of combining both, Jerry. Like, right now we're thinking that, like, most of the gods that exist at this point are in the Feywild. Which is, like, a planet which sits above the Earth. The moon is the Feywild in this world. Yeah. And that's where the elves come from, and for all we know, they did evolve. But they do have gods looking over their society. And uh, eventually breaking an accord with their gods, it sort of, like, unleashes just infinite curses on the Feywild. Just fucks the whole thing up. And that's how you get the Sealy and Unsealy Quartz. Yeah. 
But again, that's not really prehistory, it's more ancient history. Like, I would imagine that the elves would know of this still. Yes, like the Tuatha de Danann. You know what? I'm good boy. You are a good boy, Jazzy. I should get a week's worth of shopping for 15 quid. Wow. That's $20, Ginger. Okay. So, at this time, what are dragons? You mean dragons themselves? Yeah. Uh, I think they are their own independently um, evolved form of life. That's the thing about dragons. They're very versatile when it comes to, like, I hate to use the term mating and stuff. But you always see, like, there's different types of breeds of dragon and stuff. Like, even yes. the dragonborn, there are different types. Yes. Like, they're very versatile partners. It's like if, um... It's like if us humans had a bunch of sort of, like, different offshoots. Hmm. Maybe right, there's, like, so... this proto-dragon creature right now. Yeah, I'm on. No, like, this tiny little, like, lizardman. Said breeding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> breeding. My bad. Learn all races and DD is a rag, huh? Huh? Dragons started out evolving in Madagascar style, but they were cut off. Then the land masses connected, and they moved to the mainland and found new niches. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking maybe they had like a large land at one point, which sort of like shattered up, and they all evolved independently. Like, it's the this, thing about... This proto-dragon wouldn't uh, have to have no wings for that to work. Yeah. Which actually does make sense. Because that thing might also evolve into the dragonborn. And the, um... Lizardman. And kobolds. And kobolds. Just biologist thoughts looking at you, Cheer. Kobolds would be the underground variant, wouldn't they? Yeah. They just have to be too small to be able to fly to the mainland. Yeah. Well, if we're going to apply that much scientific uh, evidence to it, dragons wouldn't be able to fly long distances in general just because of how heavy they are. Oh, here's what could be the thing. It's like the Ice Age. They can't really fly that much. It's not like flying conditions for them. You know, like, it's always stormy and frozen and stuff. And again, not a lot of evolution really happened over the real ice age. I do like the idea that they're, like, wingless lizard. Wingless reptile. I bet they're just lazy and they might miss EastEnders if they fly around for too long. I can't think of a worse fate than missing EastEnders. Wingless Reptile at this time would have to face the exact same threats as... Counterparts. Most of its playing paid above ground. Yet there are some who ventured below the ground. <coughs> Bless you. Man.
and wood. Later evolve into the burn. Uh, reptilian races. Yeah, there were some who ventured below ground and would become the kobolds. I imagine the kobolds have a horrific time dealing with the dwarves and the gnomes. I don't imagine they're very, like... Wait, dwarves and gnomes? At goblins. I don't imagine the kobolds are very widely accepted. They are not. Let's face the harshest threat. From the walls and help them, as they never had a chance to unify. Oh, but kobolds are carnivorous. They are carnivorous and could not hunt for sustenance. In hunt. You know what? You know what? Something we uh, we don't see enough of anymore. No. Egg eaters. Huh? That was like a, a dinosaur's whole thing back then. Was like rather than like hunting prey, they would just steal eggs from nests and eat the eggs. I, I had no that... idea those things existed. What? Egg eaters? Egg eaters. Yeah. The Bubbles mean, would have to deal with so much noise through. underground, their eyesight must be terrible too. Don't they have dark sight? They do have dark vision. Yeah, they can see in the dark, canonically. So that makes sense, them being estranged from, like, bright society that the dwarves live in. Like, they were forced into the darkness. Co kobolds are, like, the... They're like the chaotic versions of gnomes. Like they're they they have the same sort of in ingenuity like mindset, but like really really chaotic and thrown together. Huh. Like while 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 uh, gnomes would probably be like, we we invented a. Uh, Shit. What like what what would I I mean I guess there's the kobold cannon, which is just a slingshot that shoots kobolds and it usually kills them. Oh. You have this hot kobold posting on your Twitter timeline. That's why people love kobold so much. Everyone wants to fuck a kobold. Yeah. So the the. Cheery, I, the way that I think kobolds make, make their lot in this world is in exchange for protection, they offer food to um, oh God, dragons but like, and wyverns and shit. You just raised a dark point. The kobolds would probably be utilized by the dwarves. They could be utilized as slave labor by some uh, castes, yes. Like, if we're going by, these guys had to be carnivorous so they could barely survive. Like, they would have to rely on the dwarves to help them. They'd have oh, yeah, to, man, like, I... plea with their lives, like, for whatever, like, animals the dwarves could farm. One second. Okay. See, I knew we'd have to go through this at some point, going through history. But yeah, the power imbalance here would imply that the kobolds would have to, like, do, like, a lot of demeaning shit in order to become, like, well, to survive. Well, how do they, how do they develop a symbiotic relationship with dragons or, like, dragon kin? I am... I imagine, like, that is when they get back up above ground, because, like, 
once the above ground is like unfrozen and stuff and the dwarven kingdoms that used to like harm them are swept away they would get to like go back up above ground only to find that it's still hostile up there but when they find dragons the dragons would regard them as like relative even like the less um brand new world sapient wyverns would be like these small creatures they're basically us but like they, poor. they look like me they smell like me like it doesn't take much for a dragon to just pick up a fucking like goat and just drop it for the kobolds and then the kobolds would like build shelter for the dragons and stuff so they would become like yeah. dragon underlings what if they had a uh like coinless economy like the only reason why kobolds for example would hoard gold would be to offer it to dragons for their hordes. Yeah. And that's how you end up getting gold dragons. Your delivery driver's on his way. He's 10 miles away. <laughs> uh, how close is this sticking with D&D? &D? Uh, we're just sort of like Brent knowing it right now. Yes. Like, how do all of these races come into evolution? How do they, like, evolve alongside beings that are literally gods? How do you deal with stuff that's just giant monstrosities? Perspective at all? I mean, the, as the stream title says, we're making D and D history all the way up to the modern era. Yeah, we're currently in prehistory because we're trying to decide how things would evolve. Yes. Y so currently, we are in like two hundred thousand AD, or not AD, two hundred thousand BC. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, because you've got like you've got regular dragons who are like normal ish dragons and then you've got um what are the other types dragon you got like just generic wyverns and stuff. You wanna chat about your questions you can help answer most of them. Thanks Windigo. Um, yeah. I imagine that these kobolds once they'd found like their little society under dragons would sort of evolve back into the Dragonborn. How is like that a special ability that dwarves would love? Hmm? I think... Je Brain is mush right now. Okay. That's okay. No, I reckon, like, once the kobolds have found, like, their safety, they can, like, pick up spears and hunt for themselves and stuff. Maybe they just, like, find their way back into society as the dragonborn. Yes. Which raises the question, do the dragons and the kobolds get it on? We're going to get this out of the way now. They could. You know what We've said it before, dragons are very, like, compatible with each other. I... It could be a, a, a matter of, like, they, they start the, the cult of dragon kind or something like that. And yeah. through just, like, sort of like a bonding ritual, uh, they end up making the uh, dragonborn. Maybe the smarter charitable dragons are the ones who help the kobolds, which make kobolds and the good dragons work together, and the diamond dragons stay a bit more animalistic, which give them reasonings to why some dragons are good and some are bad. Yeah, that yes. makes sense. Like, I imagine there's going to be a lot of dragons who are like basically fucking slave owners to the fucking kobolds, but like there are going to be some who they have like this symbiotic great like relationship with. Like, you protect us, we worship and like save you. And there's going to be some dragons that are like. You're going to guard my lair, and I might drop a cow on you from time to time. That would especially be a gold dragon. Yeah. The selfish type of dragons. Yeah, like, it's like, you're going to go to war with the dwarves because I want their gold for my horde? Eventually. But then there's, like, the, the more neutral ones, like uh, red dragons, who are just like... You're gonna go, your brain's too mushy for this, but bye. Love you, Zazzy. Bye, 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 bye. Eventually, a large earthquake shook the globe, causing the weather to correct itself. This quake and the ice melt 
caused great extra massive realizations below ground. Gloves never truly found their way above ground. So I'm simply moving to the mountains. Some tunneling even deeper than before. Goblins took to the above ground, yet some remained below ground. Oh shit, you know what? Still. I have an idea. Mm -hmm. So you, you're you looking at the portraits for the D&D &D races, right? Uh, I got them open, yeah. Legacy orcs are noticeably larger and broader than regular orcs, right? Okay. So we could have that be like the first orcs, and then they evolve into goblins, and then when they go back on ground, they evolve back into orcs. They, they can be just like that standard one. Well, you got your stronger orcs and your regular orcs. Yes. Uh, yeah. And this is how we can establish sub races. Okay. Some took to the above ground, yet some remained below ground still. Continuing their communal ways. Kobolds took heavily to the new world before them, finding a symbiotic bond with the newer dragons, which had evolved. Here's the thing that worries me is that dragons are megafauna. And like they are the same ancestors to kobolds. They must have like something else must have happened to make the dragon so big and powerful. Maybe it's just a thing about dragon blood, who knows? We do, we're the gods of this universe. Okay. I think that's a good prehistory for these races that lived underground. Ligers look like... I don't know what they look like, honestly. They look like if you stretched a tiger out, out in Photoshop. Which tiger? I love how we haven't even gotten to, like, humans yet. Because who fucking cares what they're doing? We have the same ancestors, the dwarves. That's basically what we're doing. We're doing the but same thing we did in the Ice Age. Humans... We don't really need to focus on humans, because they basically would do the exact same thing that we did in actual life. Yeah. We need to look back at the race list, though, because we need to... They, they bang rocks together and they go Gnirsk. We need to know where these other races come from. So we've got Dragonborn. Scroll up. The Dragonborn were made from, like, we, we've come to terms with the fact that these guys were made after sort of prehistory ended. No, they were made in prehistory. They, they evolved. Dwarves evolved. Elves, they come from elsewhere. Feywild. We'll, we'll mark that as Feywild. Gnomes. I think that they continue to evolve below ground. Hmm. Oh! I've got it. What? Hmm. Do you remember how we found those, like... Uh... Not Homo sapiens skulls, but one of our, like, Homo ancestors. Who was, like, really talking? small. Oh, you talking about Homo erectus? It was whatever they were, but they were, like, small. They were really small skulls and, like... Homo habilis? Yeah, maybe that's what gnomes are. They're us, but they're like Homo habilis descendants instead. The pygmy ones, yeah. They're like three foot tall. That explains itself. They evolved. 
half elves are a natural product of evolution. Maybe you'd need a little bit yeah. of magic to make sure that that worked out. But again, humans it, and elves it, are like yeah, an elf sees a human. They're basically the and same. Then, and then jazz music plays. Halflings again. They're like an offshoot of humanity. You can very easily see how they evolved. Maybe it was like humans who went below ground and then brave for top instead. Maybe they're the dwarves who left for below ground. After the Great Collapse. Those who left their tunnels. Became known as other halflings. I'll call them hobbits. They're both separate on land, so lower resource stocks, and were naturally small due to lower nutrition. I think this neatly checks out, though. Like some process between like dwarves becoming dwarves. The human ancestor becoming the dwarves, right? It stopped halfway due to catastrophe. So those people just go back above ground and they're just halflings. They're neither oh, dwarves. So oh no, wait, aren't halflings supposed to be smaller than dwarves? Uh... We could just say. <laughs> Sorry. No, this, this still checks. This still checks. It can just be a case of it happened that way. Halflings average at three feet. Dwarves are uh, generally defined at a adult height of four foot ten inches. Hmm. The average adult height among people with who are dwarves is four feet. So uh, halflings are a foot shorter than dwarves. No, but like Cheery says, this makes sense, because if they have um, lower resources, that means they have lower nutrition, which means that they would eventually just get shorter again. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mountain dwarves end up as an island dwarf, which just becomes halflings. That checks. half look, that's a natural evolution. Humans, duh. Did you say tieflings. Duh for tieflings, where it gets difficult for us. Tieflings are the first race that are uh, an infernal type race, so they they come from a different dimension, but it's not the Feywild. Mhm. Mm they come from. I forget what it's called. Hear me out, right? What if our planet got hit by another one? Okay. What if the planet that we're using here, our Earth, is just fucking immense? Like, big? Real big. But then, like, gravity would also be a problem, wouldn't it? No, maybe it's just got like a fast rotation about it. That's how that works, right? It would need to have a slow rotation if it needed to have weak gravity. Mm -hmm. What if it was hollow on the inside? Like the underdark area or something? That's how. That's probably how we get the uh, dark dwarves. They just the dark dwarves. They, they they found the core, and maybe that's yeah. where the infernals come from. They're like the bottom of the core. Yeah. Which is where tieflings come from. How do tieflings canonically happen? Uh, tieflings are connected to the Nessus Command. Um, 
Uh, wait, t the tiefling's connected to- wait, what the fuck? Give me a second. In the Planescape setting, tieflings were introduced. They were described as a mixture of human and something else, with the implication that the medium-sized non-human ancestors originated from the evil lower planes. So they're basically half demons or half fiends. <laughs> yeah, they're descendants from fiends, which are uh, demonic uh, folk. So if we say, for example, the lower plane is a place, that you can walk to. You go down through a bunch of fucking caves. You pass down through the Underdark, you're in the lower plains. And then you get the Feral Tieflings, right? And then those Tieflings become civilized, quote-unquote, and... I guess leave the Underdark? Yeah, it would make a lot of sense. If, like... It's basically its own world down there. Like, it's its own world of, like, Infernals. Maybe they have their own god down there who's just vibing. And, like, humans find their way down there, and they're like, please help us, we're going to die above ground, and they're just like, okay. And they convert them to the feral tieflings. That'll be your soul, please. So these guys come from the infernals. Nothing changes there. Oh. The Aarakocra, um... Boy, that's something, huh? Got in deep enough with our open lava fields? Yeah. And they have, like, structures which hang from, like, cave ceilings. And they have sex for money. No! Seriously, the, the, the community is just notoriously thirsty for tieflings. I mean, they have handlebars. The Aarakocra. Right? They are big fucking eagles. We're gonna get that out of the way. They're big fucking eagles. Maybe it's just that simple. Like, they're big fucking, like, bird descendants. Maybe they were, like, descendants of rocks, you know? Oh, I got an idea. Yeah? Uh, so, you know how we're we're making this a concept to where some gods just created their own races for them to be worshipped by? Like a god of the sky? What if, so I was going to say either the, a god of the sky or, like, maybe, you don't know, a god of the sky and they invented birds. Sure. That sounds like something that would that would actually be a thing. They, like, they look at the sky and they're like, the sky is beautiful, I want to populate it with stuff. And then they invent birds. See... I had this idea about the gods of whatever this world is, right? Which is whenever a pattern forms for long enough, a pattern forms with enough desperation, a god is created. So, like, these birds, they're faced with, like, the Ice Age, and they have to, like, fly above the clouds in order to, like, survive. And they're, like, just desperate fucking birds. And, um, their prayers are, like, answered when they end up buffing their own, like, fucking sky god, essentially. Maybe they have, like, flying cities, so they just ignore us. They're, they're, they are sky wardens. Once airborne, the uh, Aarakocra leave the sky with reluctance. Yeah. Oh, they can lock their wings in the wind, so they can basically stay up in the air permanently. As long as the wind keeps blowing. Which is exactly what you'd need in the uh, Ice Age. They'd probably have one, like, really big floating city. During this time, one of the 
Elliot got basically the only time bomb. they ever land is to lay eggs. <laughs> Cards off the wall. Soil above the clouds. Hey, puppy. Praying to survive. They will come up here. They are running. A oh, good. Their hope and fear. That's a new god. The god of the open skies. Who teaches them to think and helps them to fly and hunt. And new. I don't like carnivorous. They establish nests on high mountain tops or in the canopies canopies of ancient forests. But are they carnivorous? Um, they do have hunting territory, so that means they probably are. Do they hunt us? No, they they actually take pity on land dwellers because they can't fly. So they would hunt smaller, less fortunate birds. Maybe not even that. I feel like they they would they. I wonder if they're pescatarian. Like, do they just eat fish? The Ice Age. So good luck. Maybe they become pescatarian down the line, but now they eat like small critters. Like they dive below the clouds in hunting parties, and they bring back these critters and stuff. They eat fish, livestock, fruits, and grain. Oh, they can eat grain. How about this? Who rarely leave their sky temples, like their god, and just like erect a sky temple for them. The oceans didn't all freeze during the Ice Age? Huh. Well, that's useful to know. Yeah, so when... Especially with its salt water, but like if it moves enough, it can't freeze. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. The Asima, they are the divine being. They only look human, by the way. They could be anybody. Okay. I'm right at Tieflings, too. Even during the initial start of the... Or rather, the human descendants. Hu human ancestors. Human based plane touched. During the initial start of the Ice Age. A refuge. Would go very deep. So, this is like the good version right. of Tieflings, quote unquote. To avoid it. Down there, they would find. The infernos. A race of demons. Worshipping. What if they're worshipping the core of the planet? Which is just fire. The primordial fire. Right, more. The old fire at the heart of the world. Oh. They made a plea to this fire. And in turn, it protected them, evolving them into the tieflings. Or I should say the feral tieflings. When it came time for the ice age to end, these feral no. Some of these 
tieflings fled to Asatus, incurring the wrath of that god. The wrath of that god, which sundered them into the regular tieflings seen today. One of some of the egg boys ended up finding somewhere to land and ended up losing their feathers and became the S. S. Miffings? Asmar. Maybe. No, I like Sundered Bear. Why are you trying to correct me? There we go. The Esmar Lee? Oh, the Esmar... Mm. I feel like when it comes to the Esmar, they've like... Hmm. I feel like they've incurred the eye of something outside of the They're planet. Basically the angel folk. Yeah, like, whatever this god is that's created the angels, it came from beyond and it just like saw them and it pitied them. So it like placed power into them. Hey, Ypres, I have a question. Shoot, Zezes. Sorry, not sorry. You made nachos with lamb meat. You're not the only awful. cannibal here. Yeah, lamb meat is not really good with nachos, is it? And then the least funny guy in the room says, ah, that's Nacho Lamb. That's why I said it. So, these guys are just... Deity. What if there's like, a weird collection of... Gods. Like, the lesser demigods that like, travel together. And they put power into the SMR. They're like, I deign you my champion, go forth and give them power. So like anyone can be an SMR at any point in time if the gods will it. And these gods just hide as stars in the sky, watching what goes on. What do we call them? The cacophony? Cacophony, that's good. Maybe maybe they're maybe they're, I don't know. I don't I don't know if you want to add a lot of Christian symbology into this, but it sounds a lot like a court of angels that are like bound to keep singing about God. Uh, Jesse, you are not wrong to give that delivery driver a bad review. Uh, anyone who shouts at you for any particular reason is uh, wrong. Like if you're being shouted at by someone, it means that they've lost their cool. And like if you've lost your temperament, like. You've lost, essentially. Yeah, one star. Also, like, if you could take it a step further and, like, even figure out a way to call his supervisor, I'd definitely do that. See, we had this delivery guy once who really fucking pissed me and my mom off. And I've talked about this before. Yeah, I don't understand how he couldn't find a place. That's exactly what happened with me, too. It's like, we, we ordered from a takeaway that we've ordered from before, right? The, the restaurant has to have known us by now. We're pretty common customers. And this fucking delivery driver, it was on Deliveroo, so we saw him going up and down the road. Like, just outside of our place, the GPS tracker was just going up and down the road. Like, it was driving right past outside of our house, and the guy kept calling us, like, I can't find you, I can't find you. And, like, I was stood out there with my door open, like, flashing the light on the front door to, like, signal we're here. We couldn't see the guy, and he kept calling, like, I can't find you, I can't find you. And then he just left. Sounds like what the delivery drivers do uh, with me, where they just straight up steal my food. Like, not all delivery drivers are good people who are working, like, a minimum wage job. you got to understand that some people are just assholes. And when it comes to assholes, the only way that you can really teach people is with a farm hand sometimes. Like, 
if you have a son of a bitch who comes to your house and just complains at you that they couldn't find your house despite having all of the tools available in the modern info era, including GPS, Google Maps, tracking apps, and then complains that they can't find your house, that is not a them. you problem. And then a random internet sheep boy flashing a light at them. If they have every single tool available to find you, and they do not find you, in this information era, where you need a GPS for your delivery job, they could not find your address. They couldn't even get out of their car and look with their fucking oculars. Then they don't deserve their, the fucking job. I'm sorry, but if you can't find addresses, why are you a delivery driver? I don't want to take anyone's job away in this economy, but like, there has to be a better work environment for you than driving up and down a road. Also, yeah, I would be upset getting shouted at, too. I would fucking, like, throw shit in the guy's face and say, fuck you, fuck off, die. Like, I wouldn't be happy. No one comes to my house and fucking yells at me. Yeah, they're like, hey, yeah, put the package down, have a good day, have a good day, have a good day. I'll be in contact with your manager. <laughs> have a good day. I'm gonna kill you if you keep standing here. I've got a now! <laughs> <laughs> No, like, I just hate that. It's like Castle being an Doctrine Uber driver and not finding a house. I'm allowed to shoot you if you're on my property, Castle Doctrine. <laughs> We're not allowed to do that here. Why, bruv, we call it the Knights Doctrine. I'll put out me little sword and I'll chase you down road if you don't fuck off. <laughs> or you may have a crossbow trained on you. <laughs> I, I, I have a crossbow trained on you. I have a naughty sword. <laughs> Or get you out the fucking pathway. Everyone knows an Englishman's homes is castle. That's why I build all of our staircases so they're right ended on the way down. Measure taxi men not being able to get somewhere. Exactly, you'd fucking fire the asshole. That's why I have like minimal pity for this dude that Jazzy just fucking reported, and I have minimal pity for the guy that me and my mum had to report. You're in the information era. As a delivery driver, you have a phone. You've proven that to me by calling me. And yet you can't use Google Maps. This is also why I have the maximum amount of trust in a actual, like, legit taxi driver. No matter how uncouth he is when it comes to his driving behavior, he knows what he's doing. In Colorado, there was a local make my day where basically if someone attacks you on your property, you're illegally allowed to end them. That's, but if yeah, you did, it, the cops didn't want to know because of paperwork. Isn't that still just basically a thing everywhere in America? Like, if someone's attacking you on your property? Everywhere. In in, uh, in the state of Indiana, for example, we, we have basically the exact same thing, only it's called Castle Doctrine. Oh my god, yes, Chewie. It's like getting an IT job, but someone never uses a PC. Yes. That's exactly what it's like. Castle Doctrine, also known as Stand Your Ground. Yeah. Like, when it... Again, I don't... I don't. It sounds so shitty to say, I feel like. But if you have a delivery driver who's just being, like, a fucking piece of shit to you... Like... I don't know, man. You don't have to put up with that. Like, if we ever... Me and my mum, we've got this thing now, we do when we order food. Where, like... There's no reason the delivery driver should call us... On the way to our house. Right? Like, I can't think of one reason why a delivery driver for anything needs to contact me personally on the way to my house. We've done the contract, I've paid you. You deliver me my product and you leave. That's all you need to do. We've got this thing now where if we've like bought a takeaway and the guy starts calling us, we don't answer the phone. Because it's usually to fuck us about. Because there's been so many scenarios where we've been like sat there in the warmth of our home on like a cold winter or something. And this guy calls us and he just says, I'm outside. And it's like, do you want me to come outside? And they're like, yeah. It's like, what the fuck? You're a delivery driver. You deliver it to my house. 
Not like the pavement. I get mad about these situations because people should know better. These nachos are pizza lip bite, pizza lip bite, Lyra sweat. <laughs> Looking at me with his I eyes. Just like this Abaton this entire time. I had to get it out of your system, huh? Surface of heaven. Bring this time. An entity known as the Cacophony. Oh! Visited. Visited me. Oh. It was a collection of mines from elsewhere. It looked like a nebula. Stretched across the sky. Taking pity on the poor races subjected to hard conditions, the minds within the Akathonic decided to bless some of them with their divine. Of a worldly high and power. low movie. Oh, yeah, the high and low movies. They're, they're like fight movies, Ginger. Oh, okay. I watched them and it was like, it was like Yakas in a movie. Oh, okay, uh, so it's like goofy. Not really. It's more just like constant fighting. Like the raid. Kind of. Can we watch the raid? Can we watch the raid? I've heard nothing but good things and I've never seen it. Yeah, there are like hundreds of people in one fight at some point, but I'll tell you what, Ace, I was paying extra attention to some of the background actors and they were dodging at nothing. Some of them were dodging from nothing, Ace. Yeah, I swear. If you, if you pay attention to like a lot of fight scenes, you can, you can tell if they're choreographed or not by how many people just dodge at nothing. Well, welcome back, Jazzy. I subsided on my rant about delivery drivers. Don't worry, you're safe now. We did a breakdown of the, uh, the fight choreography with um, Rey, Star Wars, and Kylo against the Royal Guards. <laughs> and how within like the first like five seconds, one of the Royal Guards dodges at nothing. Uh, don't, don't apologize, Jesse. It's fine. Like, I was happy to talk about my thoughts on the subject because it gets it out of my system for just how frustrated I get of these people. First time the entity known as the Cacophony visited us was a collection of mines from elsewhere. With the nebula stretched across the sky. Taking pity on the poor race's subject to hard conditions, the mines within the Cacophony decided to bless some of them with divine enough worldly power. Create the first instances of the Esma. Any race could be blessed for any reasons. The cacophony was not. The cacophony was not ever the cacophony that made clear its reason. Okay. You know what this is mean, but when oh, when but when you give where you were tempted to reroll, wow. Can't run the game anyway, he doesn't have a GPU. Ah. Yeah, I want to watch the raid because you guys keep talking about it being good. 
I think I have a plan for Jensai. I think when the shattering happens for the elves, a great source of magic is like poured into the um the elements, the earth specifically, and like greedy humans start like wars with the uh, elf refugees to try and steal the source of their power, and they just end up corrupted by it, becoming Gensai, who for a while are like the dominant on the planet before like they sort of shatter into like. Gensai sub elements, you know. Yeah, I can't not imagine like ancient humans just not being bad. Yeah, I like, can I only put, imagine us being own, bad. I put that in my own uh, history as well, where humans <laughs> are basically uh, born evil. All they desire is power. Uh, definitely did not get most of this shit from J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh... <laughs> Bugbears are interesting because they are like. Bears, essentially. They're not they're not bugs nor bears. Nobody knows why they're called bug bears. Despite a formidable build, bug bears are quiet skulkers thanks to fey magic that allows them time. So I think like when the elves come here, like druids among them end up like doing something to the local fauna, and it creates the bug bears. Maybe they see a goblin and they're just like fucking fiddly D, and then they shoot it with lightning and then turn I was more thinking that like they saw a bear and they were like trying to like hibernate through the harsh winter and they tried to like cultivate it into a being that would survive more but they just made and like abandoned the bug bears which left them feeling kind of scorned fucking fiddly D. maybe that's what a lot of like more grounded like in animal races could be Yeah, I like that. Bugbear. The elves did something there. Air Gensai. Shattering. Just when the Gensai civilization breaks. The centaurs. I think it's another case of the elves fuck with people. Maybe it's like a curse of the Feywild. Maybe like humans try and like reinvade the Feywild. For more power. And they just get cursed. Hi Sentai. I'll put Feywild there. It's like a a case of hubris. Yeah. Where they I feel think like... they can take the Feywild, but they, they have absolutely no chance. And rather than killing them, they're just like, okay, we'll just turn you into this. And they zap them. I feel like the changeling specifically would be like druid descendants. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely cheery. Yeah, they like ride it on horses and get cursed. Oh man, maybe the first like centaurs have it specifically rough because they have like the mind of a horse entwined with theirs and they're just like, they just keep hearing whinny. <laughs> like they're just fucked up in the head. They're like, shut up, shut up. And they're just like, <laughs> it's a woo boy. Hi, Shintai. I love you, Shintai. What? What? Don't worry about it. If it's happening, it's for a reason. Cool. See, changelings aren't what I'd consider, like... See, I was thinking of the other ones when I thought of changelings. They're not really druidic. Two days ago. What is a changeling before it starts changing? Uh... They're fey. Maybe they're like. God damn it. Can, I, I, can we not talk about the Feywild? I'm at a point now where I don't want to talk about the Feywild anymore. No, but I'm getting into the Feywild now that I'm thinking about how it shattered. It's easy when you think about the Feywild as having been destroyed because the elves were stupid. So it makes you think maybe the changelings are like spirits that the elves used to commune with, but like because of the elves' like mockery of stuff, they like made themselves physical. And started hunting the ones that escaped. Like, they initially come through as, like, the wrath of the Feywild, but then they just can't go back. And they're like, oh. Fuck. 
And then, like, most of them disguise themselves among elf society and stuff, and it's just, like, trying to hide among the people. Like, no, we're just normal elves. Some of them de-evolve to the point where they become mimics. Yeah. So the changelings happen because of the Shattering. See, the way I like to think about the, like, uh, not the Shattering, the Feywild, the Fey... We need to distinguish when the elven civilization crumbled and when these ones do. We'll just call it the crumbling. See, when, um... I'm thinking when, like, the elves eventually, like, betray their gods and leave. And, like, try and flee. They, like, erect this large tree on both worlds to act as, like, a portal that you go through. Like, not an Elden Ring-sized tree, but, like, sizable. Like a redwood? Like a redwood tree. So, like, crooked and bent, like, weirdly. And, like, it's just of a portal between the Feywild and here. And over time, it just gets lost in the forest. But it is still intact. Deep Gnome... How do we say that gnomes would come into being? I don't know. Oh yeah, they were a common human descendant. Like the pygmies. Like they would be the pygmy human descendant, which went underground. Okay. Because they'd be known for, like, their ingenuity and tool-making and trap-making to survive. Which, we have proof that the Pygmies definitely did. Who are these people that you're talking about? The Pygmies? Um... No, let me do a quick little Google. Pygmy people. What are they called? Common help belief is that... I remember they had, like, some s skeletons of these, like, really small, small, like, skulls. Pygmyism, as opposed to dwarfism. Yeah. It's a short statue phenotype. Is this Dark Souls now? Yeah, this is Dark Souls. Oh my god! Did you find the skulls? No, I there's a there's a uh, picture of a European like Savannah dude in, from the 1920s with like two adults like next to him, and they're really he's, like, small. He's like three feet taller than them. Yeah, it's just like human beings afflicted with pygmyism, but like pursuing the same path that the dwarves did, where they just went underground. So they grow even shorter because they're close to, like, the gravitational source. They trade with neighboring farmers to acquire cultivated foods and other material items. No group lives deep within the forest without access to agricultural product. I think you did show me the secret Jazzy Com, actually. And I think I said something cursed to you. <laughs> A special little guy. Uh... Ah, oh, there it is. It's Homo Florensisius. They were the really small ones, right? We've only found a few bits of them. That wasn't the secret one, sent the actual secret one.
There was the Flores man nicknamed Hobbit. Nice mean. Who fled on the ground? Swords. The granted each now. Mark. Big root. Even shortcut. And the swords. They survived among Dwarven societies by fighting as fools and threat makers. And became known for that. Ingenuity. Yeah, be again. Okay, I love you. Nom, nom, nom. I can't imagine gnomes not tied to dwarves in some way or another. Yeah. Other gnomes would flee even deeper. Willing to flee. What was it called? The Underdark? I think so. A large, sprawling existence where many things they would become known as the deep and not deep was deep ones. Uh, what's the law behind the deep gnomes? The changeling deep gnome. Natives of the Underdark and are suffused with the subterranean realm's magic. And found strange magics of their own. They mostly stay to themselves down here now that they found their own niche, because like if gnomes are wielding magic, they've probably like defended themselves pretty well. Pretty much, yeah. They would stick to themselves. And yeah. And avoid the warring races, having seen too much loss. Yeah, you can decide if whether or not this turns them into isolationists or xenophobes. Yeah. Maybe they just become Switzerland. Switzerland. I am going to be Switzerland. No. Yo. Okay. Decide how to deep gnomes evolve. It's from a mix of evolution and magic, but it's a natural evolution, so I'll just call it that. Jurgar. Dwarves whose ancestors were transformed by centuries living in the deepest places of the Underdark, so they're dark dwarves. Yeah. Dwarves of the dark. The dwarves who were driven into the Underdark during its great flooding would learn the same twisted ways of this new alien world. They would be known as the Duergar. I imagine that down there they end up finding like Mind flayers, I want to say. I want to say they find mind flayers down there. And they're like just worshipping some elder thing that's been living in the crust of the earth for centuries. And that's like their major conflict down there. Okay. Like these alien beings have just been living below the ground and then like the dwarves come down and they're like, oh. Give us your brains. So they end up just fighting for centuries. East Dwergar would fight a near endless battle against beings known as the Bind Brothers. Strange and alien. 
psionic creatures. Who would focus their efforts in harnessing the dwarven, dwergen minds to their ancient entity buried in the Mind players aren't a race, so we don't have to worry about them, but you gotta sprinkle in some fancy creatures here and there to add to People really want them to become races for whatever reason. I want them to become a race, to be fair. They eat brains. They feed on intelligence. They're just dudes with tentacle faces. They're little Cthulhu guys. So again, Dwergar is a natural, magical sort of evolution. They find a new ecosystem and they use like magic to adapt to it. This happens in the Shattering. Uh, the Eldarin. Oh, they're the elves who remained. They're the elves who remained in the Feywild. We don't have to write about the elves yet. This hasn't happened in canon. Fairies, they are just natural creatures in the Feywild. Yeah. They just basically embody the Feywild. Burbulk? I have no idea. You back? Welcome back! Distant Forest cousins Wolf. of the giants. Yes. Oh, yeah, we gotta make giants in this. I feel like giants wouldn't have too much of a terrible time surviving. Like, they have a lot of calories that their body probably walks through very slowly. Because there's that thing that, like, if giants were real, they would have killed us all. So I think that they're just very inactive. We should... Uh, we could make them like the Game of Thrones giants. Just really big guys. Where they're just, well, yeah, I guess really big is in like 15 to 20 feet in, in height. And uh, they live in like the Arctic regions because that's the only where that's the only place where they can breathe in air cold enough for them to not uh, die of heat stroke. Yeah. And maybe eventually like they can find aid from the elves to like live with it. What for mind players were a parasitic life form that attaches itself to other races. Oh shit, I love I that. Have... Strange alien. Parasitic. Psychic creatures. Who would focus their efforts in hiring, harnessing the Durgan mines. Yeah. I love that. That's good. But Furbog, yeah, they're like... Giants of the uh, were used to call the temporary creatures, staying up in the frozen mountains to sustain cool air for their lungs. However, during the Ice Age, they thrived. And once it had ended, they were forced to quickly adapt. Those giants who adapted to the new air were named the Herbal. That's fair. Uh, the end of life cycle is one walks off to a new cave with a few others, sits down, and then slowly turns into a new mother brain hive. I can see why the dwarves would have problems on their hands. Cat? That is my cat. Hi, cat. Say hi, cat. Hi, cat. Okay. Would the Eldarin be like just regular elves? With the what? The Eldarin. They're like the special Feywild elves. Are they the elf loyalists or are they what elves used to be? I don't know. I think maybe it's a case that everything stems from high elves and then they split off. So like yeah. the, the, the Feywild elves are what remains of high elves. 
So what we should do is we should say the beginning. Yeah, right in the beginning. We'll just say during all of this. The hey, you don't have to get off my lap, cat. I'm typing. No, sweetie. During all of this time, the thing well, grew abundantly. We have strange fey gods and copious magics funneled through the whole of elven society. Among them live the fair light elves who would worship their gods with sacrifice to them respect all the creatures of the forest. High elves still probably exist, they're just very rare, like, pure blood descendants. Yes. And all the other types of elves are just elves who had to adapt to new climates. So we can tag them. The fire gen High elves are basically functionally immortal, unless directly killed. Yeah. Fire genasi came from the... Uh, where did he come from? The Shattering. What happened? And now we get onto the interesting part, it's the GIF. The GIF canonically in D&D were slaves to mind players. Which is interesting, because we did just write Mind Flayers in. So maybe the Mind Flayers are like an alien organism from another dimension. And they just infect worlds. And Gith were the ones that were hit first. Gith were the first of like the slaves who escaped from them, essentially. So at this time, the Gith are probably enslaved in ancient history. I, so... This could, this could, uh explain the the split between their two cultures yeah like the ones after, who... after... Go, no, go ahead you're good you saying like the ones who remained on that planet and the ones who like fled like refugees uh, and fighters well i reckon it could be a case of there's a cult a culture group of people who wanted to be strong enough to fight the mind flayers and then there are people who wanted to be smart enough to understand the Mind Flayers, and that's how you get the Gith Yankee and the Gith Renzai, or Githzerai. Yeah. So loyalists, almost. That could be a whole plot point of itself, like, are you loyal to the Mind Flayer Empire, or are you one of them traitors type stuff? I'd say it's more, uh, it could, I, I suppose that could be a thing, too. I was more so thinking that the gifts arrive were like, well, what if we become smart enough in, like, the, the ways of, like, arcane uh, thought that we can become immune to the Mind Flayer altogether? Hmm. So they all oppose the Mind Flayer, it's just... Yeah. They both just have different lines of thinking, and both of them are just, are at such a, a point in, in history where they think that the other is wrong, that they just fought. Mm -hmm. What if Gif are like ancient beings, like they came here in ancient times and like tried to hide? They're not from this world. Yeah. That's what I mean, like, is it right to insert Gif into ancient history like this, or do we just wait until later? In any case, they're outsiders. They're actually our first instance of an outsider. They come from outside the universe. Goblin, we already wrote. Natural evolution. Goliath, that's something. Distantly related to giants and infused with supernatural essence, their ancestors of their ancestors' mountainous homes.
Huh. What's the difference between them and a furbolg? What difference between who and a what? What's the difference between a goliath and a furbolg? Uh, furbolg uh, are like goat people. So they're more fey, is what you're saying. They have more fey characteristics. Yeah. Please stop licking me, cat. Please, it's very distracting. One second. Uh. I'm I'm just gonna show you a picture of Caduceus Clay because that's like the 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 uh, staple furbolg at this point. <laughs> What if we say that the Furbolgs were, um... What if we say that they were just, He's uh... He's very beautiful. He's beautiful. What if they were, like, the first, just, like, natural druids of the world? Yeah. He's trying to dance to New Air and were... the first to embrace... The forests, which provided them the air they needed to survive. Maybe they have a natural alliance with Treants. I don't think Treants exist yet because the uh, elves. Canonically, when a Treant is mentioned, it's always like ancient elves fucking gave them intelligence and then left them. You're thinking of Ents from J.R.R. Tolkien's. Different thing? Yeah, they're basically just awakened trees. So when it comes to Goliaths, they're people who had to, like, endure through, like, their spirit alone. Yeah. Fighting spirit. Giants had a second subgroup who were named the Goliaths. <laughs> who would train their Bodies through fighting. They believed when the Ice Age ended, they simply had to be strong enough to brave the cold. So, in spite of uh, not to brave the cold, to brave the new oh, okay. warmth. So Treants were created through what was called the Awakening, which was when uh, Druids uh, drew out uh, what is, uh, trees destined to become Treants meditated through the long cycle of seasons that could last decades or centuries. Awakening only under special circumstances. Druids and other Treants could use this spark of potential within trees and would protect them as they drew uh, near to the moment of the Awakening. During this process, trees gradually morphed, taking on the features among treants. After awakening, they continued to grow uh, as they did when they were simply a tree. Okay. And they're generally capable of speaking common, elvish, sylvan, and druidic. I and think. In addition, they have their own unique language, too. I think the herring one. Hmm. They're interesting because they don't have anything fey about them. They're just rabbit people. Yeah, they really are just rabbit people. They don't have a single fey bone in their body. According to the wiki, though, they did originate from the fey world. Oh, well, that's good then. I can just write that there. Like, it just. These, these are like the. This is like the, the common people of the Feywild, it's just the Heron gone. Yeah, it's like, they're the humans to the elves there. And then when the yeah. elves come here, we're the humans to them. Yeah. Okay, so they were... The Heron Nun would have... Heron gone. Sorry. <laughs> Hate that. Well, the common denizens of the forests of the Feywild. They like traveling. He enjoyed traveling. Their moon's surface. 
they like to hop between other worlds and bring the fair realm's exuberance with them. So they like cultural exchanges. So that peaceful trading type travelers. Yes. They would enjoy a cordial relation with all the beings of the Feywild. And generally avoided strife. So they just chill. They're turbo chill. So when they come over through the Feywild, it's just like another day for them. They don't realize they've sort of like broke a rule. Imagine first contact between them and like dwarves or something. <laughs> They're just like, hello. It's a fucking <laughs> rabbit. We <laughs> would like to do some trading and then they'd like eat him. Hobgoblins are interesting because it says Hobgoblin. directly that they come from Feywild, but uh, they first appeared with their goblins and bugbear kin. What if they're just like, because they have red skin, right? What if they're just like the equivalent of like tieflings in this universe, like? Well, they do have fey ancestry on their stance, so like, we can't not account for that, can we? Yeah, they're 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 basically giant goblins because they 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 gener they're generally between five and six feet tall and weigh one hundred and fifty to two hundred pounds. Maybe they're like the centaurs, where they made the mistake of raiding the Feywild, like a tribe of like roving goblins came upon the portal and they attacked it and. The Feywild hit back. They have dark they vision too. Well they, they, um, maybe they never shed the like fighting spirit that they had when they were once orcs because they cowardice is worse than death to them. Oh, maybe they're like the orcs who went back above ground. And they became but, like, goblins. They also went. Hmm. What if they just come from the Feywild? What if they come if from the come... Feywilds underground? What if they're like the Feywilds version of dwarves? Goblins are crafty uh, people, right? Hobgoblins on here, they do look like they're set up to be dwarves. Right. What if what if what if goblins figured out a way to like slip into the Feywild and they I evolved don't... independently? I don't think they'd be doing that at this point in time. It's prehistory right now. War is the lifeblood of hobgoblins. Yeah, this would have to just be like an invasion force. Hmm. Maybe they're just orcs that got cast. Maybe they led a charge. Like, when civilization was first founding and it was, like, tribal after the Ice Age melts, and then the elven civilization shatters. Maybe, like, a bunch of, like, humans and goblins and stuff were, like... Uh, not humans and goblins, humans and orcs and stuff were, like, together because they were like, yeah, we're strong, we can take on anything and stuff. And, like, this is how so, they just got corrupted. Yeah, so, the, like, the same way that the humans with them who like rode into battle on horseback got turned into centaurs these orcs got turned into hobgoblins yeah and like whereas the centaurs think that they got royally fucked these guys think hell yeah we got blessed oh so they just do a complete 180 like their their enemies are now their allies yeah that, that could explain how they get their own feywild court the court of the goblins i like it also, the Kenku, we can we can um, attribute another thing to that god that we made. Yes, the, the god who made birds. The god of the birds. Uh, maybe the Kenku were cursed and their voices were taken for speaking out against their gods. Like, maybe they were just a type of bird person who was like, I see it this way. And their god was like, you dare speak against me because they were having an ego day. 
I forget what culture had a, a story like this, but like crows are like at first it used to have like rainbow wings and like a beautiful singing voice, and mm -hmm. uh, I, they had to pass some sort of trial that involved scorching their feathers to the point where they are like permanently stained black, and their their voice is now like shrill and crackly. Just check some of these other things. Oh my god, goblins have fey ancestry? Yeah, hobgoblins. No, regular goblins. Well, that don't, that don't fall in line with our canon. Fuck that shit, don't care. You want a goblin now? Well, you don't come from a fey. I don't care. Maybe there's some great meeting down the line where the goblin tribes unify. And, like, make a plea to the fey wild. And that's how they get the Court of Goblin... Oh, the Court of Goblin Kin. Yeah. All goblins. All goblin kin. Uh, I'm just checking any others out, seeing if we missed any stats that they might have that, like, imply their existence was Feywild or something. You love war and bloodshed so much, now your skin will be red to remind you of your hubris in attacking us. Maybe you shouldn't have done that <laughs> dick ass. And then the hobgoblins are like... That's fucking awesome! I love that! Thanks, guys! Alright, let's talk about the lizard folk. This is absolutely evolution, right? Yeah, just evolution. It's like, they were the draconic lizard ancestors, they didn't really go anywhere towards the dragons or anywhere back towards the kobolds or anything like that. They were just lizards. Minotaurs, cursed. Cursed? How? Well, just the same way of that, like, centaurs thing. Just the Feywild. Ah, uh, yeah. Hang on. Is there anything that we can base them on that might have had them cursed into? What about Goliaths? Goliaths join up with the humans and orcs who are like, strength, 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 will gain power, strength, strength. Like, tribes. And, like, they go into the <laughs> Feywild and they get fucking turbo cursed. Yo, that's fucking cool. Thanks, bro. Red means faster and <laughs> they become 40k orcs. Oh, actually, this is fucked up, Ginger. These guys ain't got a fave gene in them. They're not fey creatures. And I'll give you some more bad news. Bugbears are, too. What do you mean? Bugbears are fey. I know they are. Again, we could make that like a meeting of the fey's later down the line. How do you deal with Minotaurs? Because they aren't and never have been Fey. Maybe they're just a creature that comes from like... Wait, no. They don't have dark vision either, they just live above ground, they're normal. Huh. Maybe they come at a later date. Maybe they're outsiders. We know the orcs are a naturally evolved phenomenon. The satyrs as well are fey. Doesn't make it easy to deal with. Satyrs make sense as just they existed in the fey wild. They didn't really evolve from anything. They got probably put there by gods. Experiment effect. However, they were also known to sometimes butt heads, which got them in trouble with the it's up. Hi, sweet. How's it going? Speaking of D&D &D nerds, it's sweet. 
Welcome in, sweet. We're currently going through today. Writing like... The best way I've got of describing this is, hey, do you remember the film Bright? We're trying to do that, but like completely looking at like how these races might have reacted through history. As opposed to just dropping them all into our setting. Go back from your walk out. Would have watched me walking out until just now. That's cool. Don't worry. Sea elves next again. They're just part of the shattering. Yeah. I'm really caught up on minor claws. I'm going to leave a note on that. Shadar Kai. They were once fey like the rest of the elven king. Their uh, kin. Then they exist between life and death. They're death elves. Shattering. Yeah. The Arinari. Shift is where we get interesting. Humanoids with bestial aspects. I think they're like when furbolgs pushed their limits. Yeah. They're like when furbolgs. Maybe they're like a meeting between the furbolgs and the um. Uh, the changelings. Yes. Like instead of like warring with each other, like you're both strange. They like learn from each other. Like neither of them really have a home. Oh, I know what it is. Changelings don't really feel like they have a home among anywhere. So they turn to the forests. And they're embraced by the uh, furbolgs. And the furbolg are like, hey man, do you want some, like, pine tea? A uh, shift is a lichen offshoots normally. We can work that into things. So we can he, say... Like, he, like, pats a tree and is like, this has been my best friend for 300 years. And then the tree, <laughs> tree comes down and is alive. <laughs> it's, it's a live tree. Yeah, we can say that's an... Tree. Aided evolution, then. Fearbolg have, like, I think they have famously just, like, muted, like, personalities and basically no social skills because they just live in the forest. What's the changeling lore here? So the lore that we came up with in the changeling world, we have a really weird thing with the Feywild because, like, it's so intrinsically tied to D&D, but at the same time, I feel like it's so fucking boring. <laughs> it really is. It really is boring. Unless but we're trying to spice like the... it up a bit. So what we're saying is the elves were like the original like big civilization on the Feywild that the High Elves were. And they would like worship the gods and the magic there. But the Feywild itself is the moon. Essentially. Yeah, we turned the Feywild into the moon. But eventually the elves end up fucking up. And um like they end up breaking an accord or like accidentally getting cast, and they flee the Feywild onto our planet. Which has just got out of its ice age. Uh, the Tabaxi. I really like the Tabaxi law as it's written currently. Can I read this out to you? Yeah. Created by the Cat Lord, a divine being of the upper planes, to blend vast. the qualities of humanoids and cats. It's just vast. It's just vast, but it's also kind of fun. Like, they have just their own fucking god. Like, one race has its own god. She's so pretty! Like, what do you think? Just like one race has its own god. Look, it's either it's either it's either Bast or or Sekhmet, and I'd I'd, I'd rather it be Bast. And I'm gonna be a B one sec. Wait, I need to I need to do my speed piss. So guys, you uh come here often. He he disappeared. Yeah, based on the Hindu Vinara. Stop Jackass it's me. Vinara are either monkeys, apes, or a race of forest dwelling people. In the epic of Ramayana. 
The Venaras help Rama defeat Ravana. They are generally depicted as humanoid apes or godlike beings. So I got thinking about, like, the stamps that it was necessary for us to reach the modern era that we're in right now. A Magitech engine. Guys having a cat god and monkey having a monkey god isn't weird at all. Huh. It's just, yeah, I wonder when Tabaxi cool. arrive here. Maybe they arrive here and they see the cats and they're like, I'd like to shape that but be more human. Yeah, it's the same thing with like the bird god. So deity, but I don't think they're here yet. Are they here in prehistory? But they could be from far off lands. I like the oh, idea wait, that this god flies in on a fucking pyramid and is like, my children. Shoots a fucking yeah, laser at them. <laughs> and then just falls asleep and hasn't woke up since. Like cats do. It's just a sleepy little guy. Total are interesting, because they're, they're part of a subset that we haven't actually got to yet, which is the water-based ones. Like Tortal, Triton, uh, there were some others too, hang on. You had the Tortal of Triton, and uh, none of those. Hmm. There's also the Loctath and the Grong. Uh, uh. What is it? Locathath? Locathath? The fucking frogs. No, that's Grug. Oh, yeah. The Grugs are the frogs. The Locathath are the fish. Oh, yeah, those guys. The fish that can't fucking breathe in, on, on dry land. Yeah, I think these all belong to, like, the same designation. And that is Lovecraftian God. Right? Like... There's this should just god of the ocean who just like sees the land as its own domain that it's not a part of. And the ocean is just this land of infinite possibility. And it just cultivates life. Like the total is one of them. Is total like life like that? Let me scroll up again. If I find out that totals come from the Feywild, I'm gonna fucking scream. No. They don't. They also have hold breath, so I assume that they were at some point aquatic life. So they come from their underwater deity. I think Tritons are a peoples who eventually are driven to the water god and plea for it. And they're like, they just become like Atlanteans because of it. So they just plead to their deity. Water genocide come in the shattering. Do you want tea? This is with the essence of magical and poisonous effects by the rituals that created them. Each of these one team manifests their serpentine heritage in a variety of ways. Serpent God. Serpent God, or are we gonna sit? I was thinking this is like the first thing that's just an experiment gone horribly wrong. Uh, who would make these things then? Dark I feel elves? like th this would be the like dark elven response to like human tyranny is like they make like a big ritual around like creating a life form specifically designed to fuck people up because the yuan t fucks up dms <laughs> like you want to make a war you want to make a war race like fuck it I'll, I'll make my own so i think these were created like in a ritual of some kind the kender fucking annoy me Kender. Because they, yeah, they're that thing that we couldn't figure out what the fuck they were. Yeah. I think they're like elf dwarves. Don't worry about Kenda. They're from Dragonlance. They're in the they're in the list. I'm sorry, it's too late. Yeah, they're in the list. It's too. Late. We have to make them their own thing. I think we we make them their own thing based off of the image that I sent you. Okay. You know what they could be? 
Druidic the that, dwarves. The uh, I was gonna say the image that I sent you kind of looks like either a fearball dwarf hybrid or a fearball halfling hybrid. Yeah, like maybe the furbolgs are like roving, like they rove around and they help people out and like so maybe they find some of those dwarves who like came to the surface. After the uh, collapse, and they found the uh, for bugs, because no one can decide what a kender is supposed to be. Is we what we found out? Yeah, kender evolved naturally through a process of the dwarves fleeing from the underground, meeting with the furbog. Astral elves, they're outsiders, and they're not even relevant until the modern era. Auto gnomes are not relevant, Grant. These are all irrelevant. <laughs> Gif, we've already got Hadozi. I, I guess all the the Spelljammer ones. Let's just go to Avalon. Same thing, Bird God. Oh, yeah. That would be the Bird God. I imagine these would be like great sages and scribes. Maybe they're like the assassins of whatever church is up there. They do have. They are stealthy. They have stealth feathers. As those he can be like. Venara? Distant kin of giant. Oh, owls yeah! The, ah, fuck! They're not from the Feywild. They're not. They can't. They're not. Be. No, look, I'm reading their racial traits. They don't have Fey ancestry. We're good. Distant kin of giant owls from the Feywild. They don't have Fey ancestry. I don't have to write them as Fey. Good. Good. I'm not obligated to write this creature as Fey. <laughs> you're, the, you're the. You're the author, therefore. With the power. Lineages. Lineage is hell. Hell. <laughs> hell. Hell, Michigan. Alabama. Created. They're created. It says lineages, but, like, let's be honest. If you're going out of your way to fuck so hard that you create something weird like this, like you're you're a mad scientist. Lionin, they should probably be part of like the cat gods thing, unless I'm about yeah. to find out that they're Feywild. They're not Feywild. They're not Feywild. Kalashtar. Kalashtar are a compound people created from a union of humanity and renegade spirits from the plane of dreams. Leonin are from MTG. Yeah, but they're, 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 they're cool. I they like come them. From the they come from Shining Lands, a, a, a golden plains that e rarely even gods pass, or trespass. What? Trespass? Nomadic lion-like humanoids. The Kalashtar are cool. Yeah, we invented a bard god who was like there to help the initial birds of the universe. And like there's some like floating ruins out there amongst the crowds uh, the clouds and stuff where like they gather and scribe things like I reckon the elves do anyway. They're like elves possessed by other elves, but they're they're people created by the Union of Humanity and renegade spirits from oh, the Plane Dreams. Oh Kalashtars are psionic humanoids from from Adar? Oh, it's a fictional country. Maybe we could make it so that, like, they have something to do with a meeting between the GIF. Yeah. Humans who... Humans who accept the teachings of the, uh, GIF Zerai. Or perhaps they were enslaved under the GIF Yankee. Whichever the more militarist uh -huh. one is. So I'll say that's a natural evolution. It's a ghost from the moon Esper projecting to some land elf. Oh, I like neat. the one we've come up with, too. Gif deserve to have cooler shit. Gif are cool, and I think we've wrote something kind of, like, cool about them. Like, the old D&D lore says that they were, like, slaves who escaped from Mind Flayers. But, like, we've expanded on that and said that Mind Flayers are just, like, parasitic organisms from other worlds that embed themselves in worlds and grow. Head crabs. Head crabs. Kalashtar, that. They kind of look like head crabs, too. 
They are aided evolution. Warforge are nothing but created. It's kind of simple. I guess, like, eventually the dwarves will create them, or maybe the gnomes. Warforge are made from, or made by elves, I believe. Uh, auto gnomes would be from gnomes, or from, fuck. Oh, it says here that they're Feywild. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I know that. I know you're joking. They're not Feywild. What was it made from wood and metal, but they're can feel pain and emotion? Gnomes. Okay. Auto gnomes are built by rock gnomes. Verdun. Uh, over their existence, chaos, doing their best to find a way in an unfamiliar world. I don't know what that means. Oh shit, I found a place for the Minotaur, I think, now. Where? I think there's like... Whatever this god is that blessed the Tabaxi, I think it probably also uplifted the Minotaurs. Okay. And the Loxodon. Like, it's not just a cat god, it's a god that looks upon, like... Non-sapient creatures and says, I can do something about that. The animal god. Yeah, like a god of the animals, a god of the wild. What would it look like? I think it would look like a fucking chimera, you know what I'm saying? Like a beast with yeah. like different heads and shit. It could what have the body it's... of a lion and the head of what... a goat. What if it's a like a a cognito hazard in a way where every single time you look away from it and look back at it, it's it's a different type of chimera. It's a completely different beast you've never seen before in your life. It just keeps its form is constantly shifting. <laughs> then as a DM, your player asks you, what does it look like? And you're just like, I don't know. Well, I don't your have DM a clue. Basically just ha your DM basically just has a stroke every single time you, uh, a, a PC looks away from it and looks back at it because <laughs> now it has, to, <laughs> it has to describe an entirely new look for it. Wait until it transforms into a rat and stab it. <laughs> yeah, like what you think. The rat goes like this. You're like this. The rat. Ooh, I like Cheery's other idea. If it changes, it started normal, but every time it raises a beast sapiens, it gains a part of their body. It's Godric the Grafted. Okay. What is a Verdon? <laughs> they look like goblins. Uh, Verdin are they owe, they're descendants of goblins and hobgoblins transformed by the shadow of that which endures. Okay, so they're like goblins that met a deity. Next, <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're they're chaos Verdins. The looks done. Uh, deity so they're made. From the under, they're from the underdark. Verdins are from the underdark. They're little elephant dudes. Uh, the Simic hybrid. They use magic to transfer the traits of animals into humans, elves, and... Oh, right, these are the people who draw animal spirits into themselves. So they're like an advanced form of druid. Right. Meh. Meh. Simic hybrid, babe. Use different life forms together. In recent years, they've extended their research to humanoid subjects, magically transferring the traits of various animals into humans, elves, and. Ved. Vedokin. Well, what the fuck is this? Is the Simic combine a different thing to Simic Hybrid? Simic Hybrid is just a person who gets an animal spirit put in them, but the Simic combine is something completely different. So the Simic Hybrid is created. Huh. So what's the Simic combine? Nordic steward of nature and the wild, its mission is to preserve and advance the natural world. Okay, so they're just like... Nature people. Maybe they're like... 
eventually nature terrorists. Nature terrorists. No, like, think Final Fantasy VII, like... They're watching, like, their world get industrialized and forests get cut down eventually. So, so they're just like, okay, we're gonna cause a little bit of, like, chaos from that. And it's just, like, very disgruntled druids. Uh, I don't know what the hell a Vedelken is, though. Hi, Frop. Oh, it's a Grung. Oh, and Slender. Standing almost a head taller than humans, but weighing about the same. Their hairless skin comes in a range of shades of blue, their eyes are darker shades of blue or violet. They lack external ears, their noses are broad and flat, and they are partially amphibious. So are we saying that they're like, related to that sea god, maybe? I hate the way did. Like, maybe these are the eyes and ears of a sea god. You know? Oh, feral teeth, they were created. Yeah, I like the idea that these guys come from that deity. Uh, what is next? We have the Lokotath, which is absolutely just an uplifted fish by the uh, sea yes. deity. Like, he, he probably, this was probably like his, like, this was like pre alpha build of him trying to make a, a, a sentient creature, and he really fucked up. <laughs> That oh, this is exactly what he wanted. He's like, fuck. They they're too small to defend themselves underwater, but if they go on land, they can't breathe. Doing some D and D stuff? Hell yeah, we are. We're um, we're trying to write like how a D and D world would evolve from like its earliest stages into the modern era. Like grown. If I ever do a Feywild-based campaign, I want to make a Grung character that is based on <laughs> this, this, this painting I found of a frog that is in a suit. Oh, do you want to tea with a snake people that were created? But maybe they, like, devolved over time, and then you want tea pure blood is what they were when they started. So do you want tea is what, like, they evolved into? Like... The pure genes sort of, like, devolved and they've become more snake-like, but the pure bloods are, like, more humanoid forms. Yes. Now, the Gen Sire, where we've talked about, like, the Shattering event, I think these are people who directly stole power from the, um, Feywild and succeeded. And so they just are... came back magical. These are, like, the Conquerors. And these guys eventually, like, break... I'm just gonna put generic magic on that. These guys eventually just break and they fuck up. Uh, the Bullywug. What the fuck was the Bullywug? Oh yeah, these were the whack ones that I found. Bullywug. Damn Bullywug. fear though was absolutely a vampire. These so are, they. Oh, these are toads. Oh yeah, that's deity, obviously. So there's Grong and then there's there's Bullywug. And the Daphnir were... They're vampires. Are we saying that there's, like, a vampire god or are these, like... Are these the doing of, like... The drow? They're yes. goth enough to have done this. They saw a vampire and they're like, I'm gonna fuck that. Okay, so we did it. We've created most of the wall. Okay. So now that we vaguely have an idea of where all of these guys come from, I'm going to go to the Elven Civilization Falls. It's just a broad event. So are we starting from the Stone Age? We're starting from the Stone Age. We're like 
barely just at a stone age. The ice age just ended. And uh, elven civilization has fallen. Why has it fallen? I get the feeling that, like, maybe their gods lied to them and said that they were the only ones out there. And then the second that the clouds parted on Earth and the snow stopped, they saw people, like, moving down there again. Like, they divinated. There's people. There's so many people. We're not alone. And then, like, they confront their gods and they're like, hey, why can't we go and see those people? And they're like, you have gone against us and now you will fall. You are correct, Jerry. Not everybody hit the Stone Age at the same time. Uh, so by the time we actually get to the actual Stone Age, uh, for, I don't know, humans, The Elven Civilization is, like, huge right now. Yeah, but both the Elven Civilization, I would say the next largest one would probably be Dwarves. Dwarves then, have fallen, but they are recovering. Yeah, they've fallen, but are recovering. Next largest one, I would say, might be a tie between Goblins and Gnomes? Um, gnomes, definitely. Oh, you gotta f remember as well, the, um, uh, the Goliaths yes. are doing great. Cheery, you found it. Cheery found it? Cheery found the, the painting of the frog in the suit that I, I wanted to base a, uh, Feywild character off of. <laughs> you freak. <laughs> okay, my skin is rather dry, Cheeron. How much longer do we have to sit here? Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> Elven civilization stood tall in the Feywild. The gods of the Feywild followed the elves. Bant. I have a tea time with the mm -hmm. elvish court. Oh my god, I just realized we've accidentally created gods of the earth. Sea, air, and like fire. We did that by accident. There's a god of the sky. There's a god of the sea. The Furbolgs are drawing from the gods of the wild. Like the earth. And the Infernals are drawing from the god of fire at the center of the world. I like how. Basically, none of these have actual forms as well. Like, it's just the sky. It's the god of the sky, the god of fire, the god of the earth, generic forest, the god of the sea. We did that by accident. Because yeah. <laughs> it failed, I'll tell the elves that they were the only pure race which existed. They inferred this to me. That. And not they were the only ones. Those in the Fey world. They were alone in the universe. Yet when the ice age passed, they looked and divinated the earth only to find it densely populated with life. When the eldest of the high elves confronted the god they called them liars. It's caused an immense civil war, passing an exile of most elves. The elf apocalypse. Okay. What's some decent lore already? We don't have a time frame for any of this, but that's okay because, like, we can't use, like, the Roman calendar because it doesn't exist because Rome doesn't exist. Yeah, prehistory is, this is, like, archaic time. We'll have our own time uh, at some point when we invent that. 
I don't think elves right now are in a position to really invent post-shattering of their civilization either. Okay. Out of twisted frops to hit. No, they are very quite classy. Frog in a suit. Can't go climb on me right now. Open portals. Can't go climb on me right now, please. Thank you. To escape the wall which wished them and dead or was and found themselves on hell. They traveled as refugees through tree-like pyramids, uh, not pyramids, portals, which blended with a forest. Some elves stayed to themselves, and others found that. Hey, you gotta stop headbutting my keyboard, please. Don't have Some elves keyboard. stayed to their origins. Trying to emulate once more what was lost. Yet others found their own new callings in the world. That's how new elven types spring up. Don't headbutt me. I know headbutts mean love, but she knocks my freaking keyboard and then I end up like pressing this gate. Okay. Ginger, can I get every other type of L? Every other type? We have all of them. Those who remain true to the Feywild begged for its forgiveness from the dust. Becoming lesser than they once were, but over time, they evolve once more into something perhaps greater. Back from work meeting? Welcome back! I just gotta remember what type of elf this was. Thank you, elf types, very cool. The Eladrin. Oh no. I'm on civilization to turn low. Not the out in the favor, so you will Oh. What the fuck? Oh, whack. My playlist of music ran out. Have we been going three hours? Yes. Wow. I feel like we've been here for 20 minutes, but apparently it's been three hours. They invited us to mean that they were alone in the universe. Yet when the Ice Age passed, they looked and divinated the Earth, only to find it dense populated with life. When the eldest of the High Elves confronted the gods, and called them liars, it caused an immense civil war causing the exile of most Elves. The open portals to escape the world, which wished them death or worse, and found themselves on Earth. They travel as refugees through tree-like portals which blend with the forest. Some elves stayed true to their origins, trying to emulate what was once lost. They remain high elves. The elves found their own new callings in the world. And branched out. Oh, unlike the tree. Like in the fucking tree pond. Like when the elves during the season ones? Wait, they have seasonal variants? <laughs> they would. Frickin' elves. Um, D and D races. Let's go to the actual wiki for this. Cause you can't get shit on like Google. 
my lineages. Can you do me? Nope, 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 nope. I need races, please. Open an elf tab, half elf? A half orcs, half elves. What now? A half orcs, half elves. Uh, half orcs, I think by definition in their stat block are half orc, half human, but really they can be half anything. Okay. At least in my opinion, they should be able to be half anything. But I think according to the stack block itself, half orcs are like half human, half orc. None separates one's a celestial eldrin, but the fey eldrin from the fey wild and change moods with the seasons and vice versa. That forms feying it. Huh. So these guys are all kinds of fucked up in the fey wild. So let me get every elf down real quick. Fair well, the Dark Elves. The Dark Elves. Fire the first to French. Venturing into the deep of this world in search of its power. That absolutely. Uh, doesn't work. I'm on a pay link. Ah! <laughs> In search of a power which they felt with it, this is when they came across the mind players and were tricked into their service for many years. You like the idea that they just change fashion throughout the year? <laughs> Greens in spring, reds in summer, oranges in autumn, and blues in winter. Uh, some don't change fashions and stick to one kind. Being very much the embodiment uh, of those feelings and emotions. But others change with the seasons themselves. <laughs> What's the point of buying D&D Beyond shit if you can't share it? They want my money too! Yeah. Are there going to be so many different types of elves, but not like one different subset of humans? Shaking my, my head. There's variant humans. Oh. I thought you were going to talk about orcs, because there really aren't that many different orcs. Yeah, for real. What elves? Found their homes. Amongst the forest, living in peace without worrying of curses, as they once had. They found community with the local druids and built great alliances amongst the trees. Eldrin realms of the Feywild, a realm of perils, beauty, and boundless magic. Using that magic, Eldrin can step from one place to another in the blink of an eye, and each Eldrin resonates with emotions captured in the Feywild in the form of seasons, affinities that affect the Eldrin's mood and appearance. A legend season can change, while some remain in one season forever. Interesting. Uh... You've got the Pallid Elves. Pallid Elves are mystical and insightful people. With skin as pale as the surface of Exandria's largest moon, they emerge from the pallid grove a century and wander the world with childlike curiosity. Weird. What if we say that these are like elves who like put themselves into a weird fucking stasis? Like the gith? Nah, that's only canon for our campaign. Oh. Like, I'm saying the elves in this universe, they come out of, like, this apocalypse that's going on around them. 
and they just like put themselves into a sleep in like some mountain tomb. <laughs> and then they like Fuck wake up a couple of years later and like try to learn from the world all inquisitively. Like they were skulls of the old world, but they can't deal with war, so they just sleep. Don't get paid enough to deal with this. Sleeps. Hello, elves. Well, uh, scholars. Amongst their old homes. <coughs> if you can't share the link, just simply come copy past to take that Hasbro. Wait, it's Hasbro? They were not ready. Yeah, the elves aren't really <laughs> even that good at warriors. That's why they made Warforge. They're like, fuck it, I want you to do war for me. <laughs> they're like deep they inside did... the moon in moon cryo chambers. They, Respectable. They, they... Very full out reaction, yeah. They're not ready the to deal with the hardships. The elves, and they're just like, what is war? And so. And they said, fuck! They went to a long, deep sleep. Within. A large mountain cave. Boards to deter any who would approach. So they're basically just waiting out to come back into the story at some other point. Like maybe we find them in modern times as like archaeologists and they're like, what's going on? And then we just like shoot them like blam blam. <laughs> Okay. Apparently the Mark of Shadow is a thing, but I don't think that really matters. Like, its description is, if you're an elf with the Mark of Shadow, you have this subrace with the following traits. Like, is it a subrace? Astral Elves. Isn't that? Yeah, that's the other thing. Bishtaha slash... Tiraha elves. Elves who dwell in the forest and countryside known as Ishtaha. Okay. Most live in isolated communities away from other races. So these are like the uh get off my lawn elves. Mark things from Avaron. What? What? I said old ass elves. I don't know where the hell Jeff is. <laughs> They're just like old elves that live on like farms and stuff and they want nothing to do with society. I chose this simple life because all y'all won't stop stabbing each other. When I see a woman, I call her the hookers. The elderly and the tired. Copy this text over. Never mind. I like the idea that these are. Are these guys kind of like the modern day Amish? Like, they're just staying away from it all. They don't want this technology stuff. Don't much care for it. Don't much care that's, for this technology. That, that sounds like dwarven stuff. Ah, uh, you talking dwarven there, Sonny? Back in my day, people ain't speaking dwarven. Uh, we've Silvan got. Sylvan in this household. The Vidar Elves. The Vidar Elves are those who dwell in the cities of Kaldash. Doesn't exist. They're comfortable with technology. Oh, okay. Marcus Planners, oh, Architects, the... Aphesies. So these guys live among... I guess these guys live among the, um... Dwarves and Gnomes. These are the dwarves... Or not the dwarves. These are the elves who saw the, uh... The, the constructs and creations that dw uh, dwarves and gnomes were making. They're like... That's fucking awesome. 
Back home, I mean, we only I, had floating, grassy platforms. Wow. I mean, we could we could make it better because we're elves and we're better than you, but we can we can work with this. Uh, dragon marks are a branding that lets them channel the power of Cerberus, a dragon god, uh, a dragon that got murdered and then turned into crystals in space, orbit the planet uh, of Evron. Planet is also a dragon. <laughs> Named Ebron, as a matter of fact. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the planet's also a dragon. Why are there so many fucking elves? It's actually annoying. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. I don't like that. There's too many. There's too many elves, not enough, like, different variants of, like, humans or orcs. Is it just that elves, like, immediately adapt to their new, like, surroundings? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. The, the, elves. The, 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 the elves basically uh, balkanized themselves. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they really did. They 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 all look the same. They all speak the same language, but they they insist that they're different people. They study as scholars and equals. Putting their magics and um, Warhead creations together. We create even better. Pick. These guys are going to be the ones who are progressing society, I'm telling you that much. We'll just uh, tag that so we can come back to it later. Um, the Zendika. Elves are strongly associated with nature and magic that flows through their forest homes. The shamans and druids channel this magic of life and grow communicating with the land and the spirits. There's nothing different between the wood elves here that I'm reading. You're an offshoot of the wood elves and I won't hear otherwise. The Tejuru nation is the largest of the three main elven nations. Doesn't exist. But because they're from the Zendika lands. The most open to people of other races. So they're like hippie elves. That doesn't really matter to write down. The Jiraga elves. Okay. Oh, they're the racist elves. Racist elves. Have little respect for any other races of Zendikar or those of other elves. <laughs> They're racist towards themselves. Themselves. Oh, they're eugenics racists. They're eugenics racists. The survival of the nation traditions of George Elves' old goals to view the influence of others as weakness. Good head. They eschew the good habits of others, even avoiding the pathways blazed by the truth of impossible. Okay. Uh, next, you got the Moldaya. Elves of the Moldaya nation are set apart by elves of the relationship, spirits, and the elven ancestors. Again, a lot of these are like not relevant to anything, they're just cultures. First race in your world is a fungal hive mind parasite. <laughs> I love fungal hive minds. According to D&D, elves adapt like how real life humans do, changing to their environment. Humans in D&D for some reason just don't. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> Why don't we? I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. That's lazy writing. Like, with... The only way that I'll be happy is if they just keep adding sub races to every fucking race like they have the elves. That will kill all of the other elves. I won't deal with this. It was because when they made the first elf race, it was so specific to one kind of elf. The when they went to another region. Uh, and should have adapted to humans to gain sign. They said, fuck it, we gotta change it up. A lot of elves are offshoots of wood elves, high elves, and underground elves. Yeah. I like the ones we've got here. We've got, like, the tech elves. Who want to be like a part of like dwarven civilization. You've got the boomer elves who want nothing to do with civilization. You've got the sleeping scholar elves who will come in useful in the story later, I'm sure. The Varial are winged elves. These are rare creatures. Shut up. Uh, we need we need to stop. We're, we're, we're... No, no, no. We're on the last one. The Gurgash elves. We're on the last one. <laughs> They shun contact with other folk, preferring the solace of the deepest forest, and again, it's just a wood elf. Okay. 
What does this sound like? What does what sound like, babe? Nothing sounds like anything different. You sound a bit closer. Why does it sound closer? I don't know. I just I just threw my blanket over my microphone. Huh. You sound a little bit more compact, baby. Oh. Hi. Sorry. On Earth, however, these races would not find much peace. Bands of tribes had formed together from simple notions of strength alone. Aside from the dwarven civilization that laid below the surface, the strongest force were the tribal warriors of should we call them the Warriors of the Sun? <laughs> These guys who raid for Feywild. Warriors of the Sun. That are Warriors hey, of the Sun. William? Hi, babe. Can, can I... Can I ask you something real quick? Yeah. So... I just clicked on your throne... You want to ask about the dick pillow, don't you? No. That's interesting. I, I wanted, I, the I giant wanted spider? Why, why do you have the giant enemy spider? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you, you like it? I like the giant spider on my throne.com. And it, there's, you also have a fucking metal detector. <laughs> metal detectors are good. <laughs> It's not even a, a, a fancy one. This looks like it was made in the 1980s. <laughs> yeah. What can I say? I like metal detectors. <laughs> so it's a band of humans, Goliaths, and orcs who believed in strength and conquest. They were greedy people, and much the elves populate the world from a place of magical power, which many of them had never seen or wielded. Wishing to claim it for themselves, they united the tribes and attacked the Feywild directly. The elves of the forest were decimated by sudden attack, and the warriors easily charge into the Feywild. However, they were not ready for what would happen when they reached out into it. Terrific magical beings pass The horse riding warriors were turned to centaurs. What? Which they found a horrific fate. The orcs were cast into a box. Which they believed was a great glory, and that their conquest had provided them deals. Of strength. What was the last one? The 
Goliaths for some reason. Something happened to the Goliaths when they came through. Was it the Goliaths or was it Furbolgs? Of what? When they raided the Feywild. It was Goliath. Yeah. I don't remember why we said they did that. I don't know why the either. But we did say they have to raid the Feywild. They become Minotaur. No, they don't. Minotaurs are created by the god. I think we just changed midway through what the Minotaurs do. Oh shit! I know! The Goliaths were the ones who became the Gensai, didn't they? Through their strength, they became the Gensai by stealing the power of the forests. There we go. Alright. Grace not match cuts peace. Bands and tribes formed together in simple notions of strength alone. Aside from the dwarven civilization that laid below the surface, the strongest force was the tribal warriors of the sun. This was a band of humans, goliaths, and orcs. Who believed in strength and conquest. They were greedy people and watched the elves populate the world from a place of magical power, which many of them have never seen or wielded. Wishing to claim it for themselves, they united the tribes and attacked the Feywild directly. The elves of the forest were decimated by the sudden attack, and the warriors easily charged into the Feywild. However, they were not ready for what would happen. When they reached Anthony, horrific magical beings cursed them, the horse riding warriors were turned into centaurs, which they found a horrific fate. Orgs were cast into fur bulbs. No, they weren't. Pop goblins. Pop goblins. They believed it was a great glory, and that their conquest had provided them yields of strength. The Goliaths, by stealing the power of the forest, became the world's first of the Gensai, powerful elemental beings who would rule as avatars of the elements. And I think this is a good place to start drawing up a map putting factions on it and, like, throwing them against each other. Like, this is the major event that's happened. We now have, like, most of the players in the game except for the gen- uh, the GIF. The GIF haven't arrived yet. Humans haven't really- or, or, humans are just doing their own thing. Humans are vibing. Humans are doing exactly what you'd expect. They're, like, hunter-gather killing tribe. Dang it, Stone Age. Throwing spears into like giant ass beasts. Well. <laughs> oh, yeah. But aside from that, we've done like most of everything before like making a map now. Yes. We gotta get the Dra Draconic Isles. We gotta get like places where these beings can exist. We got. Oh my god. Do we even bother mapping the Underdark? No. No. I don't think okay. you bother mapping either the 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 Feywild. You could attempt to map. I think you just like put the. I think you should forests. put just places where you can enter the underground. Yes. Like if there's just a pit to the infernal plains, just mark that pit to the infernal plains. Oh man. So yeah. I think we did pretty good for starting out, setting some foundations. Now we can get to the meat and potatoes next time. Internally got like everywhere that these guys are supposed to come from. Right, we know where every single race originates and now we know what to do with them. Yep. We know general ambitions, the dwarves want to stay to themselves. Uh, right now, the Gensai are, like, having a superiority complex over thinking that they're overpowered and, like, god-tier. The uh, Hobgoblins will probably end up serving under them. Like, respecting their power. 
The centaurs will return to the wild, however, and live among the fae that have, like, survived and just be like, hey, we're, like, really sorry. And, like, eventually they'll find forgiveness, I'm sure. But yeah! That was... Oh, fuck, how long have I been recording? 34 minutes? Four, God fucking damn it. Hours. Okay. I think this was fun. I like yeah. world building. Yeah! Oh! Uh -huh. But yeah, thank you all for stopping by. This has been the most interesting stream I've done in a hot minute, I'll tell you that much. Well, well, when, when next time? Ah, uh, why not tomorrow, babe? Tomorrow? My brain will be refreshed by now. Mine will hopefully be yes. <laughs> yeah, this was good. We 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 got we got a, we got a game plan. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll see you all later. Raid Leafu. Raid Leafu? Raid Leafu. I'll see you all later, Raid Leafu. <coughs> oh, fuck, I'm dying. Uh, it's See, been a fun one. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking dying. Uh, I've got that chicken dinner again today. The pulled chicken barbecue cheesy wraps. I'm on my own. You always have me. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to make my way. I'm traveling through the back rooms currently. You saw me. I was in level seven. Maybe in level your, like arms. Yes. And then I read.